two, one. Hello all. Come one, come all. To this astrology and human design live by the human design astrologer. I'm going to keep this uh, lip balm near me so I can use it again. Did y'all see we have two full moons in Capricorn this year? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I talked about it a little bit in my full moon workshop that I just did on Thursday. That lives in the Astro HD community. And we're really in... A transitional time period right now with that energy because full moons close out six month cycles but the new moon we had in Capricorn was less than six months ago so there's this energy of like wanting to close out this cycle of feeling like we need to close out this cycle because the energy is there and there just is confusion there's illusion there's just feelings of not having the full clarity we need to close out this cycle right now and that's that's okay like that's how it's meant to be because this isn't a real true completion it's like a psych <laughs> like psych this isn't the the full moon to be closing out the chapter that's the second full moon we have in capricorn which will be on july 21st a literal month apart from the first one which is hilarious so i did a full moon workshop part one for the full moon in capricorn we had on friday that lives in my astro hd membership community in the video library and then i talked about the next full moon a little bit in that workshop there are journal prompts there's just a walkthrough of like the current transits and how to apply it to your chart and how to understand like what's going on and apply that to your chart and look at that for your chart specifically to get the answers that are personalized for you based on your chart and then I'll be doing a part two full moon and Capricorn workshop on July. I haven't, what day is it? If you're in my membership community and you saw it to RSVP to it, you know what date it is. It's like before the full moon, I think it's July 19th or July 20th. Let me look right now. I'll be doing that on July 19th. Yes, it's a Friday. Um, so come join the full moon workshop and you can catch the replay for the last one in the membership if you're in and you're if you're inside it's literally only $15 a month so it's an incredibly valuable thing to invest in hey Kelsey with the C oh my god that's so cool road to 10k 10k what hey girl I don't know listen to your authority <laughs> the transits are never meant to help you make decisions the transits give you understanding into what you're currently currently going through and what is a focus of your life. That's what the transits are. They're like your life story, the energy of like what's what's happening with you today. But decisions, that comes back to your human design authority. Decisions always need to be made from your human design authority in alignment with your human design authority. So like I y'all know I do the the weekly transit updates every Sunday with my astro board. I just posted like 30 minutes ago the one for this week and I don't force myself to do those before I'm excited to do them because I know one they won't be good if I like force myself to do it before my authority is like, yeah, okay. Right now is the time to do it. Like we're excited about it. And two, I know they won't do well. So like always make decisions from your authority. No one else is your authority. No one else is here to tell you, especially like your astrology. No one is here to tell you what to do. Like you have an inner authority that your human design teaches you about that is calibrating you to alignment with your highest potential and your purpose. Like human design is so unique in that way because astrology is like your roadmap. It's like your Google Maps. We can look at every single area of your life and what's going on, the timing of what's going to happen in that area of your life or the potential energy that could happen in that area of your life. So it's like a map, but a map is huge. <laughs> like if you want to get from Los Angeles to New York, you need to know how to get there, right? Like, so that's what human design is for. It gives you literal directions for how to get to where you want to go in the right way that is for you. And that's gonna be more most successful for you. So always make decisions from your human design authority. Four six generator, hey, amazing. Do you have my custom, do you have a custom human design report for my website? Cause that will walk you through everything in your chart 
everything, authority, strategy, even like your environment, your determination, the deeper stuff in human design, it will walk you through your profile, um, the shadow of each like profile line that you have. So the shadow of fourth line, I believe off the top of my head is denial. <laughs> and then the shadow of the sixth line is like being aloof and arrogant, but it depends on where you are in your journey with the sixth line for how that's going to show up for you. I walk you through that in the custom report you can get from my website, astrologyhumandesign.com. Not from me, but another person, rude. Okay, well, hopefully it's as helpful. <laughs> I don't know about any other, uh, any other ones because I wrote the one that is on my website. My environment is mountains. Ooh, that's amazing. I have a lot of friends who are mountains. I mean, I, I live like close to mountains, so it makes sense. Yeah, check it out. Um, what was I talking about? Your human design authority. Oh, and how like, okay, so this is what's really cool about human design. Your life purpose is like a road trip from Los Angeles to New York, right? Like make like starting in Los Angeles, that's like your birth. And then getting to New York is like the end of your life. You fulfilled your purpose. You feel satisfied with like what you did in your life. Um, and human design, like there are so many ways you can take to get from Los Angeles to New York, right? But human design tells you what is the best way for you, like what the best path is for you to take. So it's literally like calibrating you to the best path in the best life for you as an individual and with the unique energy that you came here with. So it really is like a calibration that like syncs you up with everything that's meant for you in the way that it's meant for you. It's really a beautiful system in that way. Virgo rising and sun. Oh my God, and Gemini moon. I love that. Super mercurial. Super mercurial. We love that. I, Gemini rules my chart, so <laughs> I feel you. I'm also mercurial as, as well as Venusian because I am a Libra rising. Let's get the likes up, guys. Let's get to a thousand. Let's get at least to a thousand likes. Do you know anything about vertex points? I don't. Um, I think there's only one, right? Conjunct your north nodes and Pisces in the sixth. I feel like you're here to do some some spiritual type of work. Trying to reach the right audience. Please give me a chance. What? What, what? Was that a spam? <laughs> I don't even know. Mercury rules mine as well. Woo woo! Venus actually rules my chart, but it's in Gemini. So I got the best of both worlds in that regard. <laughs> Ooh, Virgo Sun Sag Moon. I love that. I'm a Sag Moon too. Yes, Jupiter is in Gemini until like a year from now, I think. If I had my ephemeris in front of me, I could tell you exactly, but because I know it goes retrograde and then yeah, next year it will be in cancer. Y'all next year is something else. Woo! We're 2K likes. Thank you guys. Venus and Taurus in the ninth house. Ooh, rad. My Venus is in the ninth house too, but it's in Gemini which makes sense. I teach astrology and human design. Like <laughs> it fits, it fits, it fits, it fits. If you guys didn't see on my story, I am, uh, I opened up my astrology readings so you can book one. Um, and my wait time is really low right now. My wait time is only like a one to two weeks. Usually I have like a two to three week wait time, which is like, it usually leans towards like three weeks, but now it's like, I'm caught up. So my wait time is not as long as it usually is. If you want an astrology reading. Venus and Gemini too. Hey, hey, Veronica. Ooh, Gemini sun and moon born on a new moon in your seventh house. I love that. I love that. Taurus moon. Ooh, I've been meeting a lot of Taurus moons lately. I feel like because the moon is exalted in Taurus, it like that placement is the most Taurus placement of any other 
like Taurus placement people I've ever met in my life. Taurus moon are like the most embodied Taurus energy I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking astrology readings right now through my profile. I just open them up again. Thanks. Being a Libra rising is fun. <laughs> Being a Libra rising is really fun. Although it wasn't for most of my life because I was a huge people pleaser and was a scared, was a scared to speak my truth. And especially when it came to like boundary setting, but well, I don't have that problem no more. Thanks that in return. <laughs> 29 Libra Ascendant. Ooh, that feels big. Why am I iffy, feeling iffy about the full moon in Capricorn? Because this is the, like, <laughs> it's like a psych. It's like, it's like a, uh, it's not a cop out, but it's like a, um, I don't know the fucking word for it. I've been trying to think of the word for it since I did my full moon workshop on Thursday. Like, I can't think of the word for it. It's like, it's like a psych. It's it's not a true like closing out of a six month cycle because the new moon in Capricorn was January 11th and truly were like, like we want to close out the cycle, right? In this, whatever areas of life you have this full moon in Capricorn in, which is a huge part of what I talked about in the workshop was like why this full moon isn't like, it's like a psych. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a psych. Um, and like my personal story of how this is showing up for me, I talked about a lot in the workshop and for me, it's happening in my fourth house. So like, I really want to move. I really want to have the move figured out. I really want to find my ne next place. I really just want to like have it all figured out, but it is not time to close out that cycle yet. Like it, it's going to happen around the next full moon in Capricorn. We literally have less than a month from now. Um, and that it's just so wild because this full moon in Capricorn was at one degree and the next one will be at 29 degrees. So that's when we'll really fully feel like closing out this cycle and really see it come to a completion and see it come to a manifestation. Like that's what I'm anticipating. I'll have answers around my <laughs> next home. Like it's all going to kind of come together around then, but now it's just kind of like, it, it's not fully manifested yet. Like it, we're still feeling unclear. We're still in this kind of transition. Um, and that's just how like the, the, it's meant to be right now. And I just saw four, four, four. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you want to learn more about how to work with this energy, I did, like I said, the full moon workshop is in my Astro HD community in my membership. Um, and I'll be doing another full moon workshop for the next full moon as well. So that was part one. The next one will be part two. I did go over the next full moon a little bit in the workshop I did uh, for this one. And it's whenever I do my full moon, new moon workshops, they're all about helping you all figure out how to apply this to your chart. So it helps you, it walks you through a process of like figuring out how this applies for you on a personal level based on your chart. Ooh, Leo Moon Manifesting Generator. I love that combo. Splenic Projector, nice. I love projectors. I just closed out a 20 year cycle with this full moon. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I think too, the fact that we have Pluto moving back into Capricorn and we have two full moons in Capricorn this year and Pluto is gonna be at 29 degrees Capricorn from September to November. Um, and we're in a Saturn year, Capricorn's ruler, like this is huge energy of completing cycles around our foundations and around our structures and our systems and establishing a new like sense of security and success for ourselves based on the, the, whatever new beginning we're in because the North node has been in Aries and Saturn's been in Pisces. Like we're all building this foundation towards a new life, towards a new identity, towards a new like version of ourselves that is going to help us manifest this new um, dream, beginning, whatever it is. And it might not be new for a lot of us. It might be something we've been working on for a long time. It just depends on where you are in your journey with it. For me, I've been working on what I'm working on for four years. So it's like I'm in the final stages. But again, that completion energy isn't really here yet.
four six generator whoop whoop i just did a whole like threads if y'all are on threads or on x twitter well, everyone's still calling it twitter i don't even know why they changed it i don't even know why elon did that but <laughs> uh i did a whole threads about like a whole thing about four sixes i probably will post it on here as a photo um because that's been fun to do lately because i i really have been Mercury's been on my midheaven in Cancer and in my 10th house, so I've really been communicating a lot of my ideas and insights and things through written um, written media, like on Twitter or on threads. And I realized a lot about four sixes lately because I've met so many of them in my life and I realized they all have the same freaking energy. And then I'm like, oh my God, like your profile really is like who you are. It really is like your essence. Um, and four six profiles are really unique because they're the only profile in human design that is completely external. Every other profile is either fully internal or has half, has like one of each is internal, external, external, internal. But uh, because of the four six lines, four, five, and six are external profile lines. And so the four six profile is completely externalized. Every single four six profile I know is like the same person. Like, of course they all have different lives and different things, but cause everyone is super unique, but the overarching energy of the four six is like always busy, always connecting with people, always like doing something. They're like the most busiest connected networking people I freaking know in my life. Where can we get the service to find out the four six profile? What do you mean? Like to find out if you are one, if you have that? Um, you just need to look up your human design chart, which I have a human design chart calculator on your website, on my, on my website, <laughs> on your website, on my website, astrologyhumandesign.com. You can get your human design chart. That's what will tell you your profile. That's where it comes from. Um, your human design is like your unique energy. And I have a calculator for it on my website, astrologyhumandesign.com. You just need your birth information like you do for your astrology chart. It comes from the same source, but human design is a different system than astrology. It combines a lot of other stuff. Um, and that's where your profile comes from. If you get, so get your human design chart from my website, astrologyhumandesign.com. And then you, if you want to learn about what all of it means, because <laughs> it is a lot, um, you can get a custom report that will break everything down from my website underneath where you get your chart. Oh, I need to put my phone on do not disturb. Okay. My astro cartography has lines all over Sweden. I would, I mean, what, what lines are they? Three, six manifester. Woo woo. That's a rare profile and your manifester, which is already rare. That's amazing. Libra sun rising Taurus moon. That's cool. I'm a Libra rising Taurus sun Sag moon. That's fun. Most of them. I mean, that's, <laughs> that doesn't tell me anything. That, that doesn't tell me anything. I don't, I have no idea what that means. That doesn't tell me anything. Cause if, if you have your Saturn or Pluto or Neptune or Uranus lines going through there. That that could be them. That's not great. <laughs> you want to look to Sun, Mercury. I mean, it also depends on your chart. Like, where are these planets in your chart? Um, I love living personally on my moon line, but I also have my moon where I live in the fourth house. So it feels like home to me. It's always felt like home to me to be here. And then finding out my moon line is here, like makes sense. I love living on my moon line. If you want to like meet people, um, if you want to like be busy where you are, Venus or Jupiter lines. Um, also that could be with Mercury line. Um, but Mercury can, can be very one or the other energy. Whereas Jupiter and Venus are like, mostly positive unless you have like Pluto or Saturn there like I said or Chiron like I haven't got out of bed yet because once I know I get up I'm gonna be go 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 <laughs> I don't know about y'all but I could not sleep last night to save my life and I went to a coffee shop and everyone in the coffee shop was like yeah no same I could not I've heard like four other people have told me that they couldn't sleep either <laughs> just like this full moon. 
lived on my moon line for nine months and it wasn't good. Oh, where's your moon in your chart? And what is it aspect? By chance, do you know what it means when all those lines converge to one point? No, I've never seen that. I mean, most people, this is what most people forget when they're looking at astrocartography. Like, where is that in your chart? Where is that planet in your chart? And then you also got to look at the angle of the line. So you have a Pluto midheaven line, you have Pluto ascendant line, you have Pluto descendant line. Like, I have a class I taught on astrocartography in my membership community. All, most of my advanced classes, all of my advanced classes actually that I've taught on astrology and human design live in my membership. I have one on the tarot of astrology or the astrology of tarot. I have one on manifesting with the moon. Like I said, I have one on astrocartography. I have one on the astrology of human design and blending the two systems. But you really got to see like where these plants are in your chart for you know the, the way that living on that line is going to show up for you. For me, I have in my natal chart, I have my moon in the third house. So being on my moon line and my moon doesn't aspect anything negatively in my chart. So me being on my moon line and my moon line or the moon rules my 10th house in midheaven. So like <laughs> success in career, good flow with like ideas and learning and education and like, you know, my like daily routines are great here, third house energy. So it just depends on what's going on in your chart. If you have Venus ruling your midheaven and your Venus doesn't negatively aspect anything in your chart, you might live best, you might feel best living on your Venus line. But again, it depends on what's in your chart. Like where these, these planets are in your chart. Oh, Hannah, you bought my human design chart explanation. It was super helpful. Yay! That's why I made it. That makes me so excited. I'm so excited. Y'all are loving your reports. 1-3 manifester. I'm a 1-3 manifesting generator. Whoop, whoop. Love that. Moon square Venus and moon opposite Mars. Holy shit. So you have a T-square between your... Yeah, right? Boyfriend and I broke up on the moon line. Yep. Hi, Velvets. Have you heard of someone... Wait, I just lost that. Have you heard of someone moving on a whim to somewhere from their chart and it worked out well? Me? <laughs> I moved here on a whim. I was like... I, I was obsessed with this place in middle school. And all through middle school and high school, I was like obsessed with where I am now. And I had never heard about it. Like I'm from the South and I'm in Colorado now. And like... I had never been west of the Mississippi River. I had, like, nobody talks about Colorado or the west in general, like, where I'm from. Like, it was small town vibes, like, small town southern vibes. Like, nobody talks about the west. And when they do, it's like, oh, that place is super liberal and, like, rrr, rrr, rrr. like <laughs> it's not positive. People don't talk positive about the west in the south, at least when I live there. This was, like, 12 years ago, so it might have changed. I don't know. I haven't gone back because I don't like that place. My Mars line is there. But I moved here on a whim because well, I, I was an undergrad at the time and I was paying out-of-state tuition, which was killing my soul to pay out-of-state tuition where I was. And my parents were going to move to that state. They didn't end up moving. So I was like, oh, you know what? I could live anywhere. I could go to college anywhere. Why the fuck am I here? I've always loved Colorado. Like, I've always been obsessed with this town in Colorado. Like, why am I not living there? And they have the neuroscience program that I want to study. Like, fuck yeah, I'm going to move there and try to get in-state tuition and like just be where I've been obsessed with my whole life. And I didn't know about astrocartography then. I barely even knew about astrology then. So that was, you could call that moving here on a whim because I did. <laughs> and it worked out. And then when did I find out about astrocartography? Probably like seven years, after seven years of living here. So... That's, that's my story. It's very, um, it's very intu intu intuitively inspired. <laughs> I've lived on my sun line my whole life and it's been a roller coaster. Where's your sun in your chart and what does it negatively aspect? One, three, manifester. Woo, woo. We got a couple of y'all. Love to see it. Someone said your Mars line is the equivalent equivalent to Moldavite. I could see that. I mean, I feel like Pluto would be more so, but Mars also, yeah, depending on where Mars is in the chart. 
my Mars is in my seventh house, so I was just like constantly living on my Mars line. I, I mean, it built resilience in me for goddamn sure, because I was just like I just was bullied my whole life <laughs> up until I left that place. Like I was just like the target of everyone's bullshit and like asshole behavior. You read my reading once. Said I'm a manifester. Do you still do these readings? Um, you can get your chart through my website and you can download an interpretation of your human design chart from my website. So that's what I do for human design readings. Like it's an instant PDF report sent to you about your chart. Um, you can get that from astrologyhumandesign.com. I don't do human design readings. I don't really think they're um, effective. Uh, human design is more of like an introspective self journey. So that's why I created the report so that you have it to refer back to as you're learning your design more and more and more. And it, it's like, it also walks you through what everything means. So it's a great place if you're new to like start with the basics and start to understand what everything in your chart means. Cause I really don't think human design readings are that helpful. And I don't think people should really be doing them, but um, I do love providing y'all with the information to go on that journey yourself. Cause I really feel like it's more valuable as a self introspective personal development journey. Aries sun, Aries moon. Hey, born on a new moon. You are here to be a symbol of that energy. I have Chiron in my 12th house. But the sun rule, Leo rules my 11th house. The sun rules my 11th house and my son is in the 8th house. So it makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. 2-4 manifesting generator. Hey, that's what my mom is. I <laughs> love that energy. 2-4 emotional projector. Gotta admit, I always wanted to be a man, manifester or generator. Yeah. We always want to be what we're not, right? Grass is greener. Grass is greener because it's fake, though. <laughs> Grass is greener because it's fake. <laughs> Being a projector is such a freaking gift. I mean, it's all a gift, but... You were in Colorado two weeks ago? Oh my god, it probably wasn't blasting hot yet. <laughs> I feel like that was one of the weeks we had a cooler a cooler week, so that's good. Because right now it is it is way too hot. And it's killing me. Yeah, go look at your astro cartography. Oh, we got another 1-3 ma manifester. Hey, Miranda. I'm a 1-3-2. We are like... Okay, have y'all seen all those videos of people talking about how like women and you know who can use the internet can like are better than pis like better than private investigators that's a one three profile there are probably a one three profile because <laughs> we are such natural pis like i was seeing i started seeing a new guy and let me tell you i couldn't find his instagram i can only find him on linkedin and once i had that over you find you find the person in one place over and it took a lot of digging but <laughs> One, three profiles, we, we can dig. We can dig. We go deep. Manifesting generator, hey! Me too. Oh, you love my podcast? Thanks! Um, I haven't been posting my podcast like consistently in a long time. Um, if you've already listened to all the episodes, there are a lot of episodes. So... Go find past ones because there is some gold on my podcast for sure. But now my focus is in building my membership community. Um, I go, I do a live Q&A in my membership community almost every week. And then I do a lot of classes in there. And man, I have so much going on right now. I'm working on my book. I'm working on uh, a new course. And I'm still finishing the Human Design Variable, Variables Bundle that I launched. So putting more, more lessons in there. I just filmed one yesterday on the human design perspective, like your perspective, your view, and what that means. Um, and that's where my, that inspired the video I did on Hitler, if y'all didn't see that. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, I do this full time. I teach astrology and I teach human design. And I really don't take many readings anymore. Um, cause I just love teaching. I love teaching y'all so much. I love giving you these tools in a really fun and simple way to help you understand your charts. 
Um, that's like my passion is helping y'all learn these systems yourself. Cause it's really, it's really not that complicated once it's you know, the way I teach it <laughs> and the way I teach is also fun. So we have fun learning these systems and I do it in a really simple way that helps you feel more confident in your readings because like so many people overcomplicate it. And I feel like that creates such a like mental chatter around feeling confident in reading like, it doesn't matter if you have a certification or not. It, it's about feeling confident in what you're doing. And I feel like when we simplify it, like I do in my teachings, it really just helps helps take away the mental chatter and the analysis paralysis with interpretations. I teach whole, the whole sign house system. I love your Mar Marie Antoinette video. I'm tired of having to explain to people her story. Yeah, I forgot I did that video. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there too about it. And it was so long ago. Oh, four six generator. Hey, we're just talking about four six profiles. North node is not the same as Chiron. No, no uh, Chiron is an asteroid and the nodes, the North and South node are a calculation based on the position of the sun, earth and moon. Where does free will come from? What do you mean? Oh, in like the systems? I mean, we're, I don't, I don't know how to, can you ask that question a different way? Well, I'm gonna post after this live, I'm gonna post um, this tweet I did about the 4-6 profile because I've just met someone who's a 4-6 profile. And I was realizing like, this person has so many friends and they're always hanging out with their friends and they're always like doing something. They're always busy. They're all and I'm like, wait, every single four, six profile I know is like that. Like, holy shit. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do the, I'll post the, the tweet, um, that I did on it on, on here. Just learning the matrix in systems. Do you have free will? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I say in all my readings, like at the beginning, like, nothing about your chart is written in stone. Like this is how it has to be, especially when it comes to astrology, because it's all just potential. There are thousands, if not millions of ways to interpret different things in, in astrology. Um, so it's just about like what resonates with you. And this is why I love teaching astrology because no one knows your life better than you do. And when you have the ability to like look at your chart and see the potential based on what you already know about your life or what your intuition has already been telling you about your life. Like it just instantly confirms what you already know inside versus getting a reading from someone else. There's like I said, a thousand different ways they could interpret that energy and not all of the ways are going to resonate with you. Um, so this is why I love teaching the systems because it gives you a confirmation, a way to confirm what you already know inside. Like, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew as a college dropout, I knew I didn't want to work for other people forever because I worked so many customer service jobs for so long. I literally for like years had two or three jobs at a time because where I live is very expensive. And it was like, that's how the only way I could get by is having two to three customer service jobs at a time. And I was so sick of it after like five years of doing that. And so I knew I wanted to pursue entrepreneurship. I knew I wanted to have my own business. I knew I didn't want to work for other people. Um, and so when I learned that is also in my chart, like I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. That's why I couldn't, like I hated working for other people and it like drove me mad because I'm not meant to. And that's what that confirmed in my chart when I started learning my chart and seeing that, oh, that's, yeah, that's probably not the right, like that wasn't the path for me. Like I meant to pursue entrepreneurship and that's what was, I was feeling already inside. So it just confirms what you know inside, but you don't have, none of it's written in stone. Like none of it's like, this is how your life has to be. Like, that's not what it's for. It's a guidance system. Not, it's not a dictator. It was resonating and explained the way you were, you're charted, yes. And it explained like how to get there too. It explained like 
oh, my North Node's in the second house on Pluto. Like I'm literally meant to create my own wealth. I'm meant to create my own resources and possessions. And whenever I live off of other people's stuff, whenever I work for other people, rent from other people, share resources with other people, it, it is not good. Because <laughs> that's where my South Node is. Like that's what I'm here to move away from. Hey T, I am a 1-3 manifesting generator, sacral authority. Libra rising, Sag moon, Taurus sun. That's me. 6-2 exemplar. I've never heard that. 6-2 uh, is a role model hermit. And if you want to learn more about it, you can get a custom report from my website that will walk you through the finer details of what that means. No idea how to dismantle my birth chart. Have you taken my astrology crash course or got my astrology ebook, The Cosmos Within You? Because that will walk you through how to understand everything and like what to start with. Because yeah, if you're trying to do it all at once, it is going to be overwhelming. Um, I also have a YouTube video on like the three most important placements to start with in learning your astrology. In my opinion, those are your North Node, your Chiron, and I forget what the third one is that I said. <laughs> Probably your midheaven. But it also depends on what you're looking to understand about your life. Like your astrology will tell you anything about your life. So have a focus. Like what's going on with my relationships? What what should I do in my career? Like that's kind of my when I was doing readings, that was my lens is like life purpose, which I have a class on how to read your chart for life purpose if you're looking for that like specific um how to understand specifically those areas of your chart. But you you got you gotta have a focus. Yeah, or you'll get fucking overwhelmed. I mean that's with anything. What are your thoughts on six two profiles? Is that what you meant to type? Because it says six twelve. You just saw the tweet? Yay! Yeah, I did a whole tweet on uh, four six profiles. Because y'all are of like the only profile in human design that is completely external. Like your whole life is about <laughs> other people and your con contribution to the people around you. Yeah, hey Watts, I'm live. Oh, thank you. <laughs> y'all, that Tyler dance, I spent probably an hour trying to do it last night and I just, I was like sweating by the, and then I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> if this isn't it, I, I, I'm done trying to learn it. My birthday is April 28th. Yes, I'm a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. April 28th, 94. Um, if you want to learn how to read your chart for life purpose, go get my class on that. You can get it through my profile in my store. Or it's in my membership too. And in my membership community, you get access to all of my advanced classes on human design. I would also recommend like taking that class in alignment with my ebook, which my members, those of you that are in my membership community, get 50% off my ebook because I want everyone to have it. Like it is your go to resource and guide for learning astrology and human design and how to read and understand your charts. Like it is all you need. <laughs> To understand your charts and start reading them. Um, so get the ebook. It's also included in my courses on astrology and human design. If you really want to deep dive with me. If I answered your question on this live, that we would be here for hours. Like that's why I'm saying I have a class on it because <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, you want to start with your North Node and your Midheaven, but like there are many other places to look and it's, it's a holistic picture. You don't have to buy my course, but I'm just telling you that's, that's the easiest way to learn that. What do you say briefly when someone asks why astrology actually explains us? Uh, well, it's a snapshot of like when you came into the world it's a snapshot of like your life story and your life's picture like it's literally a snapshot of 
the time that you came into the world. And like we can look at astrology for the current transits, like the moon's in Capricorn today. So we're all kind of feeling like we need to put structures and systems in place and it's on Pluto right now. So we're feeling the need to like transform our structures and our systems and innovate in our lives, right? That's like going to last until tomorrow. But the energy that you are born with is your story and your energy. It's like a, um, an imprint of your, your whole life's picture. Thank you, Watts. <laughs> yeah, I've really been like this whole Pluto and Aquarius um, transit that's we're really like stepping into fully this year has really just, and especially lately because it's trining my chart ruler. So I'm really feeling called to innovate what I'm doing and what I'm creating. And I've been showing up a lot more on Twitter and X and um, Twitter X and threads. And just, I'm just experimenting with like different ways to show up. So I appreciate you for <laughs> that. Cause yeah, I, I don't know. I just had fun with the da learning that dance last night. It was like the only dance on, on TikTok I've ever wanted to learn. And also the song won't get out of my head. Difference between numerology, astrology, and human design. Um, numerology is just, they're all just different ways to look at the same stuff. So numerology is just a different way to look at your life path or your energy. Astrology is like the timing of your life. It is your life story. Human design is like, who are you? in that story how are you meant to move through your story how are you meant to like make decisions that are gonna put you in the best place to align with your purpose right like how can you align with your purpose is easily and without much like hardship that's human design it's your directions it's you um, but astrology is like zoomed out it's your life Yeah, 4-6 is the only human design profile that's external. Because lot, profile lines 4, 5, and 6 are external ones. So every other profile has half and half. Or is fully internal. Like the 1-3 profile is fully internal. Because 1, 2, and 3, those profile lines are internal. This is why 1-3s need such alone time. <laughs> so much alone time. Any first line, really. Um... And they're the only ones, I think, that are fully internal. Yeah. So it's funny because I, you know, one threes and four sixes really harmonize well. But it's like, it's like the cliche introvert versus the extrovert. Like four sixes are like the most extroverted a person could be. And, you know, that's a general statement. You have more than that in your chart. So like we can't, we can't tunnel vision any placements. But in general, four sixes are completely external and one threes are completely internal. I like imprint, I have a lot of naysayers in my life and it's hard. Yeah, I just want to talk to them about it and find people that want to talk with it, talk about it with you if that's what you want. It's not the new pyramid scheme. <laughs> It's not. It is legit. I've been living it for four years and it's changed my fucking life. But, you know, whether you decide to start living yours and want to learn about it, that's up to you. Like, nobody's forcing you. Talk about pyramid schemes. I mean, our fucking whole government is... Anyways, we don't have to get into that conversation. <laughs> Haven't seen you in a little bit. Hey, Lala! Yeah, I've been doing a lot of lives this the past month or so, like at least once a week. For those of y'all that want to connect with me like on, on a consistent basis, intimately, come join my membership community. It's only $15 a month. I do live Q&As over there four times a month and I'm adding new classes and teaching new classes all the time. The live Q&A is for connection. It's for like to see y'all's faces, hear your voices, and like answer your questions that you have while you're learning astrology and human design. And then there are like over 30 classes that I've taught on astrology and human design in my membership you get access to. And members also get 50% off my ebook. Um, degrees are pretty important in astrology. Everything's important. Uh, 
Hi from Ireland. Cool. Hey, lovely bitch. Thanks. I don't have any favorite profiles. They're all different. Astro is life changing. Yes. It's like a map book of our life. They forgot to give us a birth. No, for real. This is one of the things we've been talking about a lot in my live Q&As is like how life-changing astrology has been and giving us an understanding of like what's going on in our lives and when. It's like it's better than therapy honestly because you get to understand like oh <laughs> that time period of my life that was really crazy and chaotic like it wasn't me it was just like the timing of what was going on at that time and how it was hitting my chart. Yes, Brittany, human design is amazing. It really gives you like um, specifics into your energy. I think that's one of the things that astrology lacks is like being specific. And astrology doesn't give you directions. It doesn't give you a way to move through life. It just tells you like what's going on, which is helpful in its own way. But he, that's what I love about human design is that it really tells you how you're meant to use your energy through your life story. What is that on my that must be like a pimple emerging or something i don't know what that is just look cheers up gemini taurus libra five one love it there have been a lot of five one profiles joining my membership i love to see y'all learning by yourselves because y'all have such a unique energy to share with the world hi abigail they need to teach astrology and human design to parents seriously that is one of the reasons i made my courses because and there are people in, oh my God, it just excites me so much because there is someone that just signed up for the course and she has just been talking nonstop about how it's helped her with her son so, so, so much and how to understand like her relationship with her son too. Like this is one of my favorite things about teaching the systems is like for parents and for entrepreneurs, it's so, so, so helpful to have access to these tools whenever you need them whenever you need them at any time like if you have this tool in your toolbox and your toolkit and you understand the system and you can just pull up a chart and be like oh my god this is why i felt crazy today or <laughs> whatever it's so valuable what would you start reading to understand astrology my ebook my ebook um, and i just launched an astrology crash course if you're like super super new or you just want a um, like refresher of the basics, the signs, the houses, transits, aspects, planets, my crash course that's in my store um, is a great go-to. But definitely have the ebook because it's an amazing resource to have to refer back to as you're learning more and more because the ebook walks you through literally freaking everything. The words human design designed by who <laughs> it was a system that was channeled by a guy named Ra Urahu. Sag sun and moon and rising. Well, wait, cap rising. <laughs> I was like, cool. I'm an unconscious Capricorn rising, so I really resonate with y'all. And I'm a one three profile too. We have a lot in common. That's cool. I'm a Sag moon also. I do attract a lot of manifestors as well. Got my human design chart from you and I love it. Yay! What do you need? What do you mean you need it to be read to you? Like, you got the PDF, right? Human design has been so validating. Yay! I have a Libra double gem and virgo scorpio oh wow yeah two totally different kids for sure <laughs> the libra gem is giving like want to do things all the time like be out in the world and the virgo scorpio sag is giving like don't i'm gonna go to my room don't bother me <laughs> and human design can we predict no that's an astrology thing so okay astrology timing <laughs> Human design, your energy, your energy. Astrology, timing. Human design, your energy. Human design is you. Astrology is your life. So your life encompasses all aspects, right? Other people, your job, your career, your goals, your spirituality. Like that's astrology. Human design, you. 
just you. How does your energy work? So that's, a, that's an astrology thing. And that is something I have a lesson on in my Become an Astrologer course. Is like the crucial life timing of when is best for you to move based on your astrology. When is best for you to focus on relationships based on your astrology. When is best when you're going to meet a partner. When you could potentially meet a partner. Um, how to look into what your partner will be like. What their energy ha- like is like. Uh, your children as well is, is, is part of that lesson. Thoughts on Grand Trine? Um, a Grand Trine is like your gifts, what you're good at, but what comes easily and natural to you. But it could also be really easily overlooked and prone to laziness because you're used to relying on it just being easy. That's what a grand trine is to me. And I have a class on the aspect patterns in my membership. So what's a kite mean? What's a yod or a yod? Whatever that, that one's called. I still don't know how to say that one. Grand trine, grand cross, like all of that I have a class on understanding in my membership. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you about a yod on this live because I'm not looking at your chart and <laughs> That's a very complex aspect pattern. If you want to learn how to understand it, take the class and the membership. Yeah, check it out. I also do live Q&As in there. Um, pretty much every week. Sometimes twice a week. So it's a really fun time. Pisces North Node. Y'all are going to be going through a big activation next year. Yay, Saturn kid. I appreciate you. Um, anyone I've... I don't think I've met a lot of people with North Node in the third house, but I've done a lot of readings for people with North Node in the third house. And what I've got... I guess that is people I've met. What I've gathered from it is y'all are here to really be known for your ideas. Um, and like coming to your own conclusions about things, not, not being influenced by other people's wisdom or information, like really having your own kind of, um, like say, and not, not being afraid to share that and put it out into the world. I have a yacht too, but I forget what, I forget what placements it's with. I think it's, yeah. If y'all don't know, um, Astro Dash Charts will tell you about all your aspect patterns. Well, it will tell you what they are. Um, I don't know any website that will tell you about them. But that's what my class is for. I'm gonna look at mine, because mine, I think mine's between yeah, I literally don't remember. I think maybe my midheaven and my rising and something else. I don't know. Let's look it up. Um, yep, it's between my rising. Oh, my Saturn. Oh, that's right, because it's two quincuxes and a sextile. Thoughts on Saturn return? I'm in my Saturn return too! I honestly went through, wait, are you in your first Saturn return? Um, hopefully you're not halfway through life. <laughs> um, I honestly feel like I had a crisis my whole life. My whole 20s was crises after crisis, crisis after crisis after crisis. But I honestly feel like my biggest crisis was back when I was 27. That was like the worst of the worst. And now... I mean, that's when I started learning about my chart. So that probably helped too. I really feel like Saturn return doesn't have to be hard if you're aligned with your energy, if you're aligned with where you're meant to be. But if you're not, it's going to be hard because Saturn's like, hey, why the fuck aren't you aligned with your purpose? Like, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing? And so it's going to be like a lot of major life changes to align you, self, align you with your purpose. But that's the beauty of living your human design because as long as you're living your human design, like you're, you're golden. You're aligned with everything that's meant for you. 
And I honestly feel like that prepared me for my Saturn return more than anything else was learning about my human design and how to live it. Starting with the variables, uh, well, starting with your authority, because that's how you make decisions and you want to start embodying that every single time you have to make a decision, which is a lot (laughs) throughout the day that adds up. Start with the small stuff and you can use it with the big stuff um, and it will just get easier as you learn it. And then you want to look into your variables in human design. So there are four steps to the variables that will literally transform you to align with your human design. Step one is your determination. Step two is your environment. Step three is your perspective. And step four is your motivation. So this is what I'm teaching in my variables bundle that I just launched is giving you that information on what that all means, how to align with it. Because it really, like when I started living my determination, which is step one, that's how you're meant to eat, the condition or circumstance in which it's best for your body to digest food and information. When I started aligning with that, what I tell y'all, it changed everything. It changed everything. Thanks for the, that's fun. <laughs> Thanks for that, Jess. Um... Yeah, it literally will change everything when you start living your determination, this deeper stuff about about your chart. And that will also help you connect more with your authority. So if you feel like it's hard to use your authority, if you feel like um, you get stuck a lot with how to use your authority, like living your determination and being in your right environment will make your authority so loud you can't ignore it. I swear to God. And that made my... my, um, Saturn return, so much easier. So much easier. What is a North Node activation? Um, Well, the way that I meant that is because the North Node will be in Pisces starting next year. So it's the nodal return. And the nodal return is a big transit that forces you to align with your destiny. Similar to... Who's leaving me a voicemail right now? What the fuck? (laughs) That's random. Um, What was I saying? Your nodal return will force you to like really be aware of how you need to align with your destiny and the path that you're meant to be headed. Like my nodal opposition, so nodal opposition is kind of like a prerequisite. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck that word came through, but it's like a, like a prequel to your Saturn return. The nodal opposition happens around 27, 28, and it really forces you to look at like how you have not been living in alignment with your destiny and your North Node. And this is why I say living and understanding your North Node is one of the best places to start with your chart because that's the direction you're meant to be headed in your life. And these, these, all of these crucial life timing things happen to get you to wake up to that destiny. <laughs> Truly, I mean, if we just simplify it, that's what it's all about. Hey, Jelly Bean, welcome. That's so real. Mine is direct light. My husband has been confused why I need the light on. Yeah, you should not be eating at night. So summer is like your season because the the sun is out the longest. Um, I'm the opposite. I'm in direct determination and oh my God, I hate summer. Like I love summer for two weeks cause I love like coming out of the war- the winter wet, like wardrobe and like starting to wear less clothes. I love that. And then I'm like, it's too hot. The sun's out too long. I can't stand this. And then I'm like sleeping until one or 2 PM because to, to like overcompensate for the lack of nighttime. <laughs> indirect determination is a tough one but i'm telling y'all when i started really living it like my whole life changed where can i go to get in-depth chart reading to help with life as well as human design um i don't know i have a human design custom report that you can get that will tell you all about your human design in depth um and I am offering an astrology reading right now. I just opened those up yesterday, I think. But I, I don't know. I don't know other readers. <laughs> I want to learn human design. Yeah. Yeah, I have a class um, in my membership teaching the correlations between astrology and human design. 
but literally like I have all the resources for y'all to start understanding these systems because that's like my passion is to teach this stuff that's my passion that's my passion and that's what my book I'm working on is about as well but it, all the information is already in my ebook and my courses I'm just working on putting it to a physical book because I'm really excited to have that on my shelf Oh my god, Laura, you're a Taurus sun, Scorpio moon, Libra rising. I'm the same, but I'm a Sag moon. That's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. One week you said second house was important. Um, yeah, I've done a lot of videos on the second house. So the second house is how you're meant to make money. And it doesn't matter if you have a planet there or not. You have a sign that rules it. It's the sign that comes after your rising sign. Um, and that will tell you a lot about how you're meant to make money and how you can align with that, that opportunity. Um, so the sign will tell you a lot. And the ruling planet of that sign and where that ruling planet is in your chart will tell you a lot, which I literally teach you in my Become an Astrologer course. I have a whole bonus lesson in my Become an Astrologer course on how to make money using your astrology where I walk you through how to read your second house and how to understand it and how to tie everything else in your chart with your second house because it is a holistic picture like we can't just isolate stuff. Do you do any service trades? No, I don't do trades. I accept cash money. I have a defined heart and whenever I did trades, I was just left feeling bitter and not compensated. So I don't do that. Not anymore. Um, empty houses are where you write your own story. And again, like the sign will tell you a lot about how you show up in that area of your life and the ruling planet of that sign and where that ruling planet is in your chart will tell you more about that house. So I don't have anything in my 11th house, um, no play planets in my 11th house, but Leo rules my, my 11th house. What planet rules Leo or celestial body? It's not a planet, the sun. <laughs> The sun rules Leo. So where's the sun in my chart? My sun is in Taurus in the eighth house. That gives me more insight into my 11th house because the sun rules my 11th house and it's in Leo. So I'm meant to show up on social media, which is what I deem is the 11th house. It represents other things in your life, yes, but what I attribute most to the 11th house is how you're meant to show up on social media, how you're meant to show up like in a community. Um, and that's Leo energy. Like I'm meant to exhibit Leo energy um when I show up on social media around my friends and that's also connected to my son in the eighth house so I'm meant to share my occult knowledge and wisdom as well on social media and that's my full-time job <laughs> that is my career <laughs> why do I feel like I'm going insane today probably probably because um the moon is real close to Pluto right now. I, I don't know. I don't know much about Lilith. So y'all asking about that. I'm not the one. Hey, Amy. Hey, Kelsey. Love your content. Good luck with the book. Thank you. No, I don't do readings using the old 13 signs. I don't, I don't acknowledge the 13 sign. I basically wear clothes as decorations and to make other people feel more comfortable. Wait, where did that come from? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand where that came from. Did I say something about clothes? What does it mean to have Venus? I have Venus as a chart ruler. E -e 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 -e. So if you want to learn more about your chart ruler, I have a free guide you can get in my shop um, that will break down what your chart ruler means and like f basically help you combine the planet you have it in and the sign that you have it in. Because that matters. And where what house it's in too, it matters. But um, if you don't have my free guide, then get that because it will break that down for you. Yes, it is super cool. I love this stuff. 
I love this stuff. Hey, Gia. Oh, my God. I was thinking about you today. If you're still on here. Oh, my God. Holy cow, free guide. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It will also break down what your authority and strategy mean in human design. Hey, Kelsey. I'm also a Sag Moon. Oh, my God. That's such a cool synchronicity. I'm not the one. If you want to know about the 13th sign, I'm not the one. Just found out I'm a generator. Kind of sad about it. Why are you sad about it, Kat? That's great. <laughs> I mean, it's all great. I'm a Sag Moon. I'm a blind optimist. I'm always about like, okay, what, how can we, what are the positives? What, how can we be optimistic about this? <laughs> Cause you know, we can see the bright side and everything. Like it, it exists. Silver lining of the cloud that is blocking the sun. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful. Generators are powerhouses. Y'all are like literally here to light up the world with your energy and whatever you love. And y'all are like, <laughs> y'all are just like magnetizing everything to you. If you're really in alignment with like, if you're really doing things that you love, then you're just bringing more of that energy to you. It's really freaking cool to watch this happen for a generator. It's really, really, really freaking cool. Yeah, you're welcome for the free guide, Amanda. Do you think having your ascendant in the 29th degree would be more towards the next sign? No. 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 Your progress chart is probably in the next sign. But just because it's in the 29th degree doesn't mean it... No. It's in the sign that it's in. <laughs> it's in the sign that it's in. And your evolution has probably, like I said, your progress chart ascendant has probably moved into the next sign already. Um, so that's, you know, you feel that energy in your evolution, but you were born with what you were born with. It is that energy. I don't, I don't only acknowledge cusps and that's why, because it's all in the chart somewhere. You know, the, the energy is the energy. I need your help. Is there any hope for, is that Scorpio, Pisces, Scorpio? this year it's been the worst is that sun sun scorpio moon pisces scorpio rising um okay here's the secret here's a secret about financial issues okay there's there's two things it could be one it's your belief systems you believe you have to work hard for it. You believe it can only come through your job. You believe it can, you know, belief systems. Look at them. Be honest about them. Change them. <laughs> this will change your experience with money. Second thing it could be, and probably is, in alignment with that. You're not doing what you want to be doing. You're not doing your soul's calling. You're not aligned with what you actually want to be doing to make money. Those are the only reasons, the only reasons for financial issues. The only reasons. It is nothing else. <laughs> Come, this is coming from my experience with money. I have been, I've been up with money. I've been down, 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 homeless, broke with money. Like, and every single time it was either my belief systems or I was doing something for money I didn't want to be doing. And when I changed those things, best believe my relationship with money changed and the money in my life changed. <laughs> that is all it comes down to. Don't make it anything else because that's all it is. How much are your readings? I'm only offering one reading right now. It's an audio reading. I have a two week wait time, one to two week wait time, 155. It's the first thing in my profile in my shop. Um, that's the only reading I'm doing right now, 155. And then what did you, it's, it's just a general astrology reading. So you can ask whatever you want. I don't do human design readings. I don't think people should be doing human design readings. 
Um, I think human design should be used in alignment with a self-discovery process, a personal development process, whether that's like life coaching or, you know, if you have another business that where you help people and like you can help them align with their human design. I think it has to be used in like it. You, human design is not meant to be read for people. It's meant to be used and it's, it's a guidance system to help people align with their energy. And that's why I... I made the custom report to tell you all about your human design chart. So that's something you can get from my website, astrologyhumandesign.com. It's 25 bucks. It will tell you everything about your human design chart in one PDF. Helps you understand it. And you can all, like have it as a resource to refer back to as you're learning more about your design. Because like I said, it will tell you everything. Gates, profile lines, uh, channels, centers, determination, perspective, cognition, um, environment, your incarnation cross. It will tell you literally everything about your design. It's your guide to your chart. Um, that's all I offer for helping you understand your human design chart. Unless you wanna understand the whole human design system, then I have an ebook on that and uh, my human design course that will walk you through how to understand the whole system if you wanna read for others. Or help others with human design, I should say. Uh, yeah, cusps are not a thing. Cusps are not a thing. I'm not the one if you want me to... No. Cusps are not a thing. <laughs> I love how you answer. Bless your heart. Thank you, mini baby Jean. I hope that was helpful. Because that's all it is. <laughs> it's either your beliefs or you're not doing what you want to be doing to make money. That is literally it. Most of the time, it's the beliefs. And those beliefs are related to what you're doing to make money. This was the case for me. I thought I had to go to college right after high school and get a job that paid six figures that was guaranteed six figures so I could pay off my student loan debt. And like that was my belief system for so long. And when I ended up like dropping out of college, I had a huge freaking crisis and I thought the world was over. And then I ended up doing just working customer service retail jobs because I, I still correlated like hard work with making money. But like, <laughs> no, that's not how it has to be. I have an amazing business plan, but I'm struggling with depression and motivation. Mm, that's a lot to unpack. I would say, okay, <laughs> I have never, ever, ever, I have built a very successful business that's mostly automated, teaching astrology and human design. I've never had a plan. I have never planned anything to, in my business. Never, ever, ever have I ever planned anything. Unless it's like, I'm doing this workshop a month from now. I'm doing a full moon workshop for the second full moon in Capricorn we have in a month. That's like, that's as far as my planning goes. I don't plan. And that is what works best for me and my energy. Because if I plan, that puts so much pressure on me. I have an undefined root. And I cannot stand pressure. I can't handle it. I'm not meant to handle it. Like, I need to have the freedom and the space of, like, I'm excited to do this now. Like, I'm going to do it now. Like, that's how I've always been with everything. That's how my courses have been built. That's how my ebook was made. Um, that's how I handle my classes that I teach in the membership. That's how I like handle creating content on social media. It's when I want to do it. Whenever I've tried to plan, y'all best believe that has shut down my energy faster and more than anything else. <laughs> so I don't know if that must resonate with you because I'm, I'm sharing it for a reason. But like maybe that's the issue is you're trying to plan too much and trying to like get yourself to fit into a box that isn't meant for you. I. Maybe you don't need to plan. Maybe you just need to act on inspiration as it comes and like build a habit of acting on your inspiration and not shutting it down because that's another thing too. Like this all, this all comes back to our belief systems. If we believe that we aren't worthy of showing up on social media because we, you know, it, it looks bad or we don't know how to talk or, you know, whatever, like it's not perfect, then we won't do it. But that's literally how you learn to make things better. That's how you learn to get good at something is by just doing it and it being sucky and messy. Like, Okay, y'all know I post my astrology updates every Sunday, right? Astrology time. Every Sunday. Lately, <laughs> TikTok has been showing me a lot. 
I didn't realize I've been doing this for almost two years. I've been doing those updates for almost two years. And TikTok today showed, reminded me like a year ago, the Your Astrology Time video from a year ago. I can't even watch it, y'all. I can't even watch it because I'm like, who is that person? And you, I was reading the transits like that. <laughs> That's how I was showing up on TikTok. So you're always going to get better. Don't stifle your inspiration. Don't stifle what you want to do because you're going to suck at it because, or you're nervous or whatever. Like I, I'm still nervous doing stuff like this. I'm still like <laughs> watching myself from a year ago and be like, that wasn't that great, but that's just where I was right then. And I will always get better. I was always improve, but I can't, I, you know, if you stifle yourself and you never start, it's not going to go anywhere. So two things. <laughs> Maybe you don't need to plan so much. Maybe that's what's stifling your energy and your inspiration. Um, and two, maybe you just need to like, like fall forward a little bit more, like fail forward a little bit more. I got my glasses. Um, these are a Japanese company. Uh, Kami Mon Nen. Kamimonen. They're titanium. And Japanese. Japanese. Um, different websites will give me Aries rising and Pisces rising. Okay, this is because Aries and Pisces are the rarest rising signs. And it really is important. Um, like that. How do I say that? Like, this is where we get really into the weeds with the timing and the correctness of things. So go to astro.com and type in your birth chart on astro.com. Or if you really want to invest in an amazing astrology app and software, Astro Gold. Those two places are the most accurate places to get your chart. I've noticed with astro-charts, um, their calculations on the rising and angles and things sometimes aren't correct. So that's where you're probably seeing discrepancy um, is some of these websites aren't super accurate with their calculations. And it's we really want to get um, the most precision with those with the rising when especially if it's Aries versus Pisces, because those are it really comes down to the minutes. Um, so go to astro.com. That's the most accurate free astrology chart calculator. And then Astro Gold is what I recommend everyone have if you're really serious about learning astrology and pulling charts because it's the most pretty it's the prettiest and the most accurate astrology software i don't recommend any other apps do 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 and then come back and let me know what astro.com says because <laughs> i'm curious i'm invested now oh i'm also a libra rising in sag moon julia that's so cool but i'm a taurus sun how cool. Do, do, do. Love watching your weekly astrology updates. Thanks, Erica. I have a lot of fun making them. What is North Node activation? I already answered that question. I answered that question. I think you were asking it in the context that I spoke to it because someone asked about North Node and Pisces and the North Node's about to be in Pisces. So that person or whoever, if you have North Node and Pisces, you're going to be going through your nodal return next year, which is going to activate your need to align with your destiny and move towards the direction of your North Node, wherever it is in your chart. Hey Jazz, Kelsey, I'm glad you popped up my FYP. This was really educational. Yay! I love teaching. This is my chart ruler in the ninth house, y'all. I love teaching. I think I'm a 3-5 profile. Amazing. Can someone join your membership without having taken your courses? Yes, they are separate. They are separate. You can do one or the other or you can do both. Up to you. Up to you. Taurus moon, Libra rising, Pisces moon. That's me, but I'm a Sag moon. That's so cool. I love these synchronicities. Hey, Sarah. 
I just spilled water. I think 30 years on this planet, I would know how to drink out of a cup, but sometimes you just forget. What is North Node? You mean like zero degrees, two minutes? What is that in time? I don't know. <laughs> That's not how that works. What do you think about two stelliums? Depends on where they are. Anywhere or in any sign you have a stellium, it's just going to amplify that energy. It's going to be a big overall energy of the person's life and the chart as a whole. Like I have a stellium in Taurus and I have a stellium in Scorpio. And those have been the biggest themes of my life. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You have a sellout. What does that mean? Oh, a stellium? Are you really, really a big homebody? North node and Aries, you're in your nodal return right now. Depends on what house it's in. We can't, again, we can't isolate any placements, but North node and Aries is about being a pioneer um, and embracing independence over uh, codependence. Pisces sun, cat moon, Taurus rising. That's fun. <laughs> The last, this last full moon was wild. Oh my God, tell me about it. Y'all, when I did my full moon workshop for the full moon on Thursday in the membership, I was tripping over my words like the whole time. If you watch the replay, y'all will have a good laugh, which is my goal. I am a Sag moon after all. We got to make people laugh and Venus and Gemini. I mean, that's like my whole spiel. That's, <laughs> that's like everything I do. It's got to have laughter. It's got to have fun to it. But I'm like the laughter in my full moon workshop because I was tripping on my words like the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, because <laughs> the sun was on my progressed Mercury in Cancer and I just could not speak for the life of me. It was really funny. And I got so nervous in that workshop because I literally could not get words out. So I'm telling y'all, like the, the, it's, you get better at, at what you do. It gets easier. It becomes a habit, but you still have these moments where it's not perfect and you're nervous. Like I, that literally was four days ago for me <laughs> on my workshop. And it's like, and, and the people that join the calls and the membership, it's like usually the same people. So it's like, why, why was I even nervous? Because I know these people, <laughs> I know and interact with these people almost every week. It's the funniest thing, being a human being. It's so funny. Born on a Pisces new moon and a Libra rising. I love that. You're in your nodal return too, Sarah. Whoop, whoop. Yep. It's a pivotal life transit. House system absolutely matters. I use whole sign. Um, if you want to know what the different ones are and why to use another one over, actually, I just post a blog post on that. Um, so you can go to astrologyhumandesign.com slash blog. I almost forgot I did that. <laughs> I posted about all the different house systems and why I use whole sign, um, and what you can use the other ones for if you're curious, but I just recommend whole sign for everybody, especially if you're new, it's just easier. I have also been crying sporadically. Oh my God, I can't even. There is no cuss. Uh, write it down. <laughs> write it down. Write it down. No such thing as cusps. <laughs> no such thing. Cancer season. Yeah. <laughs> Sp crying sporadically. <laughs> Man, it'll feel good when Mercury is in Leo like a week from now. A little over a week from now. Ten days from now, we'll say. Ooh, born on a new moon. Capricorn, sun and moon. Love it. Sag rising. The born on a new moon was my input. Because <laughs> I can't help but see that. <laughs> and manifesting generator. Woo woo. I'm also a manifesting generator. No, don't send me your chart. I don't, unless you're booking a reading. <laughs> but then just send me your birth time. Because most of these chart calculators on the apps and the web, I can't fucking read. 
I can't, I can't read them. They're all different and it's so annoying and none of them are pretty except for Astro Gold. That's why I love Astro Gold. Ooh, we got a lot of manifesting generators here. I love it. Where, where are y'all, where is it saying y'all are a cusp? <laughs> where are y'all reading that? <laughs> It's a study case. I don't know anything about you. <laughs> what do you mean it's a study case? I only study people that are in my life or celebrities because I know stuff about them. But without knowing you or your life, there's no context to the chart. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Jupiter. Damn! Oh yeah, you probably have the 2034 channel because a lot of Gemini gates and human design are in the throat. So a lot of Geminis are manifesting generators, especially if you were born like right after Gemini, see like when Gemini season started at the end of May. Well, like May, depends on the year, but May, anywhere from May 19th to May 26th or so, depends on the year, it changes every year. Always consult your chart. But yeah, Gemini and Sag make up the manifesting generator channel. That's the 2034. And this is why Geminis are very like fast moving people because they're usually manifesting generators. <laughs> Let's see who, who, I think Russell Brand, Donald Trump. Uh, those are the only ones I know off the top of my head. I think Kanye West is a... Kendrick Lamar might be a manifesting generator. I don't remember. I know Kanye West is a either a projector or a manifester. Nobody knows his confirmed... No one has his confirmed birth time. I'm trying to think who other Geminis are. Did I say Russell Brand? I think I did. He has that channel. May 19th is my birthday. Whoop, whoop. Are you a Taurus or a Gemini? Because it changes every year. You got a reading? Yay! No cuss should be the first thing in learning astrology, yeah. <laughs> yep, unless you're reading like Cosmo or whatever those magazines are. <laughs> that give the bullshit horoscopes. Venus and Aries, woo woo! Libra rising, hey! That's me too! That's me too. Hey, Ashley. What's up? Taurus, 95. Okay, cool. Late degree Taurus. 4-6 projector. Love that. Love that, even though I feel like it's a conundrum. How do I know that I'm a projector or a manifester? Look up your human design chart. Astrologyhumandesign.com. What's the worst sign? The one that you view as the worst. That's a relative question. I've been my Saturn return for about a month now. Yeah, mine peaked on March 1st, so I feel you. Woo, Amber's a projector. Hell yeah. 888 is a manifesting generator. Woo, love it. Libra 1-3 projector, nice. I'm also a 1-3. I'm a 1-3 sacral manifesting generator. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. X, Y, Z. Still haven't done your human design chart. Why not? It's your, it's your, um, it's your user manual. Ooh, we got another 4-6. Manny Jin. It is going to blow your mind for sure. There was a generator I knew once who, when she, she had the story of when she learned about her human design, she like cried for three hours because it like confirmed everything that she had like not understood about herself. It's really beautiful. Human design tells you about your unique energy and how you're meant to use it to move through life in alignment with your purpose. 4-1 manifester. Oh my God. That's like. Gotta be the rarest combination. Oh, 
Oh, don't be scared. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, right ankle cross of Eden people are here to create their own version of paradise. But if you get my custom, if you get a custom human design report from my website, it will tell you more about your incarnation cross. Yes, you're going to find yourself. Which only like the founder of human design, this was back in like the early 2000s. So it, it's probably changed because human design really is for the children. It's for parents to teach their children to understand how their energy works and be raised in alignment with your own unique energy. Like that's really what human design was, was brought to earth for <laughs> was to help children align with themselves and live out their purpose so that they don't have to go through this huge process of deconditioning that most of us as adults have to go through. Um, where was I going with that? I don't even remember. Five one generator. Whoop whoop. I've been learning more about astrology over the last year and it's really changed my whole outlook. Yay. Yeah, I love astrology and human design so much. And that is why I teach it to y'all. <laughs> Thanks for the likes, y'all. We're almost at 10,000 likes. Let's get it. I'm an MG. My partner's a manifester. Four kids, two projectors, one MG, and one generator. Damn, so y'all have everything except a reflector. That's wild. That's a lot of, um, wow. I was gonna say it's a lot of sacral energy. I mean, it is, it's kind of balanced though. Half y'all have sacral energy, half y'all don't. Which is so funny how that happens because that was what, I'm pretty sure my whole family has sacral, defined sacral. Um, but my brother and my dad are emotional authorities and me and my mom are not emotional authorities. So if you are not an emotional authority, you have an open or undefined solar plexus and you amplify the emotional waves of people that have an emotional authority. And so when I learned that about my family, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense why me and my mom were always deemed and thought of as like, and felt like the crazy ones, the emotional ones, because we are amplifying <laughs> the men and the family's waves. <laughs> oh man, I love human design. I love it. The cross of Eden, that's an incarnation cross. So there are like 300 different types of incarnation crosses. If we add in the types, there are like 700 or 800 different combinations of incarnation crosses. And that tells you the what of your purpose. If you have my custom human design report, it will break down what the incarnation cross is and what it means and what yours is. I mean, it'll break down everything in your chart, but it will, it will tell you about that for sure. I'm a 3-5 profile and I don't like it. Why don't, why don't you like it? I mean, I feel like that's one of the, the easiest profiles to have <laughs> because <laughs> it's so magnetic. Everybody, I know with the 3-5 profile, they're just like attracting things and people to them all the freaking time. 5-1 Manny Jen. Hey, Jay. There's a ton of five one mini gens in my membership and I love to see it. I love to see y'all connecting with each other in there and just like feeling so seen and understood. <laughs> I've been drawn to your live and that tells me I should learn about human design. Yes. Yeah, get the report and you can always like save it to your phone or your laptop or whatever and you can always come back to it. Um, I recommend starting with like your profile like we've been talking about and your authority and your type. Um, but it, you know, when you go deeper or what you go deeper into depends on your journey and always follow your authority, but the information is all there in the report. It's a great resource to have to refer back to as you're feeling called to learn more. Your manifester. Nice. Manifestors are rare. Less than 9% of the population are manifestors. I know my human design, but cancer, sun, Leo, moon, Virgo rising. Nice. says I'm a generator. Ooh, whoop, whoop. So most of humanity is a generator or a manifesting generator. It's, it's about split down the middle, like 35% each. 
And then projectors are the next most common. They're, the population of projectors is approaching like 30%. It's kind of crazy to see it increase so much. Um, but y'all are really like guides for the rest of humanity to align with like this new system and structure that we're all creating here on the planet. I have a video on what it means if your incarnation cross is a right angle versus a left angle versus a juxtaposition. Juxtaposition is only uh, for those of you that are 4-1 profiles, which is the most rare profile. I think less than a percent of the population has a 4-1 profile. And that will create the juxtaposition incarnation cross. The left angle incarnation cross is has an, a transpersonal destiny. So it's about more than just you. It's about the people in your life. Uh, the right angle cross is has a personal destiny. This is most of humanity it has a personal destiny. They're here to go through life on their own personal journey and share that with the world. And then the juxtaposition people are kind of like the bridge between the two different um, crosses. That's the basics of the incarnation cross, which I also walk you through that in my life purpose class that I have. And how to understand life purpose, looking at your chart for life purpose. One three manifestor, nice. I'm a one three two. One three projector, and I'm so tired of working. Yeah, y'all are not meant to, to work. Like very much. That's for generators. <laughs> Libra Am I a librarian teacher? No. <laughs> Every 1-3 profile is going to have a different purpose. Like, no 1-3 profile is going to be the same. It, it's just an expression of your personality. Like, I teach what I've really dived deep into learning and experimented with um, and share my personal experiences. Like, I just added a new class to my human design variables bundle where I talk about determination, environment, um, the nutrition of the human design gates and channels as well. I talk about every, all the deeper stuff in human design in that bundle and the variables is the main focus. And I just added yesterday a class on perspective and my perspective, my view is possibility. So I talked a lot about that in the class of like how I have possibility view, what it means. And I also gave personal examples for every view, every perspective. So, uh, security or no survival possibility, uh what is the third what is the third color one shit oh my god why can't i remember it <laughs> survival possibility wanting probability and i literally cannot remember the third color or the sixth color one that's wild but anyways i talked about them all and gave personal practical oh power and personal Power is the third color and personal is the sixth color. Um, and that's why I, if y'all saw my video I did on like my Roman empire is Hitler. And if he had like aligned with his true purpose, like would the world be different? <laughs> like would we, would he be known for his art instead of what he did? Because he was not aligned with his true perspective and how he was meant to view life. Um, so that's how I express my one, three profile is I share my personal experiences in my teachings and in the classes I do on astrology and human design. But like, I mean, if you want to be a librarian, yeah, awesome. You can do that, but <laughs> you don't have to, none of, none of it is written. None of it is like meant to box you in. It's just meant to confirm what you already know. What's less than nine. What makes them rare? Man less than 9% of the population are manifestors. That's what makes them rare. Um, I talk about this in my human design course because you're not just given a type. It's not just random. Your, your type is created by the channels that you have, which comes from how your astrology connects in human design. So it comes from your astrology and it puts it into gates and channels. And there are certain channels that create a manifest or aura type. It's not just given to you randomly. It's because of what your design is. So manifestors have um, a manif have to have a manifestor channel, and 
an undefined sacral. And that's what creates the manifestor type. And that combination is really rare. So that's why there are only like 9% of the world are manifestors. Juxtaposition. Oh, you have the juxta juxtaposition? Wow. 6-2 is not rare. No, that's one of the most common profiles. Look up your human design at astrologyhumandesign.com. It will tell you what you are. If y'all want to learn about your chart, like everything in your chart, what it means to be a generator, what it means to be a 5-2 profile, what it means to be a sacral or emotional authority, what your 35-36 channel means, like all of that is in the custom report you can get from my website. It breaks all of it down for you. Um, so that's the only like offer I have that will interpret your human design chart. I don't do human design chart readings because human is, human design is a system that's most to, mostly meant to be an introspective one in a personal journey, um, like a self self discovery journey is what human design is meant to be. So that's why I give you all the information and the custom interpretation of your chart you can get from my website. But I don't do readings of human design. Not right now. Do you think this works for pets? Yeah, absolutely. You can look at the human design of your pet for sure. It's 25 bucks. It's on sale right now. Five ones love Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> I meet a lot of five ones. It's probably because I'm a first line profile and then my moon is a fifth line profile. So yeah, I have that fifth line energy. What does the red arrow mean or the black arrow? You mean like up here in your chart or in the boxes? Um, a reading is like someone's reading your chart for you and telling you all about it. An interpretation is like, here's the information and what it all means for you to read. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's a PDF interpretation of your chart. I don't know how else to explain that. If you're on my website under my chart calculator and you have your chart pulled up, if you scroll down, it will tell you exactly what all is in the report and what it explains, so walks you through. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Um, I feel like there's, oh yeah. Learning about human design has helped me a lot as a manifester. Yay. Yeah. I love human design so much. I really do. Got the chart. Woo woo. Let's go. Ooh, we got a lot of Sag energy just joining. Welcome, welcome. Aries, Aries, love it. Aquarius moon, love it. My progressed moon just moved into Aquarius. Maddie, if you want to learn what those things mean for you based on your chart and everything else in your chart, get a custom report. Get a custom report. 5-1 profiles are here to be leaders and authorities in their chosen field of investigation. And manifestors are here to have an impact on the world. But if you want to learn more, like I said, get a custom report and it will tell you everything about your chart. Ooh, Libra sun, Aries moon. You were born on a full, yeah, born on a full moon. Scorpio rising. Your progressed moon is in Aquarius too, Leslie. That's so cool. Mine just moved there on the solstice on Thursday. And when I tell you all, when my progressed moon is in Capricorn for two years, I understand Capricorn moons a lot more now. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't, my emotions were like walled off from me. And then the minute my progressed moon moved into Aquarius, it like the wall was gone. And all of a sudden I was more in touch with my emotions again. It was wild. It was wild. Since the full moon, I feel different. Yeah. I feel you. We are like in limbo right now. This is a big transitional energy and the next month is going to be a lot of changes. Just got your report. Woo woo! Triple split explanation is spot on. Yeah. I've known a lot of triple splits in my life and that's where everything in the, the all the information in the report was written by me and it all comes from my personal experiences with those things. I've been studying everyone in my life's charts for four years. 
And it took me two years to build that report out with all the information in it. But it all came from personal experiences. Yeah, change is usually for the better. If you view it that way. But this is all based on, you know, this is it's all relative to your perspective. You can view something as good or bad. You can view anything as good or bad. It's raining right now. I can view that as like, oh my god, that fucking sucks. I can't go outside. Or I can view that as, that's fine. I don't really want to go outside. And, you know, the plants will be happy that it's raining. It's still raining. <laughs> no matter how I view it. Ooh, your progressed moon is in Sag. Nice. That's my natal moon. I love moon in Sag. It's such a fun one. Yes, the report includes a breakdown of your motivation. Um, I don't, I mean, so I just opened my, back up my astrology reading. If you want me to look at your progress chart in that reading, just specify that when you book it. I mean, yeah, I can read it. I can read a progress chart. I do have a class on it in my membership too. If you want to learn how to read your own progress chart. My favorite book on astrology is my ebook, The Cosmos Within You. That's becoming a real book soon. I don't have a favorite book on astrology, no, but I would say my favorite author is Stephen Forrest. Um, what is a progress chart? Your progress chart, also called secondary progressions. Nobody knows why it's secondary, but it is. Secondary progressions, your progress chart is takes into account the aging of your astrology chart and the evolution of you as you age. Does that make sense? So it's like in progressions, a year is a day. A day is a year. So your progressions, say you're 30 years old, your progress chart is your natal chart 30 days. One day equals one year. 30 days ahead of your natal chart. And that is how you are evolving throughout your life. Love how you brighten speaking about books. I love books. It's the one three in me. It's the one three. Do you believe in lucky days of the week? Monday is always amazing. Where's your moon? I have a whole, I have a whole video on that. Um, God, it makes me, it, it makes me cringe to watch it. Cause I filmed it like many years ago. <laughs> when I was new to TikTok, but it is a great video. It's still a great video. And it talks about how you can use astrology to like plan out the days of your week or like schedule things on certain days based on your astrology and like the planet rulership of each day. So I find, I mean, it, it depends because like right now, Sundays are good for me, but usually Sundays aren't that great for me because my son is in the eighth house. So Sundays can be a really deep and introspective day for me, but because the sun in the current transits is in cancer in my 10th house I feel like Sundays are better for me right now because of that transit so it depends on what your natal chart is and the transits you love books too yay yeah I love books I constantly have to like parent myself when it comes to having too many books because I'm about to move and books are a pain to move progress chart moon going over mc oh wow I was told your mom's health will deteriorate. What the fuck? I don't know. That's not how I read a chart. <laughs> For me, I would read that as, and this is what I was saying earlier, y'all, that there are like thousands and upon thousands of ways to interpret the same stuff in astrology. And this is why it's helpful for you to know what this stuff means on your own because it will just confirm what your intuition is telling you and you won't get these weird demonizing you're going to die tomorrow type interpretations. It's fucking weird. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> moon over midheaven to me would be like you're feeling more of an emotional drive to share yourself like how I just shared the sun is in my 10th house right now so I'm feeling more like sharing myself and creating more content I've really like started to create these courses I've had in the back of my head I want to create for months years even like this variables bundle I've I've literally been journaling about it for a year and I'm just now feeling called to create it because everything is moving through my 10th house right now over my midheaven. So that's that's how I would interpret that. 
Thank you, Lulu. Yeah, I, I want everyone to learn astrology. That is my goal because when you know how to read it yourself, it just opens up your world and it confirms everything about yourself that you already know. Like it's the answers to your life and it gives you a confidence as well in, in your own intuition versus when you go to someone else for a reading, it just, it's not the same. It's not the same. I have literally never had well, maybe like once or twice. I've never had like a full blown astrology reading though, because I've wanted to understand it on my own because nobody, nobody that could read my chart knows my life more than I do. So like, and that's the same, for, that goes the same for you and everyone. Like, and when you can just skip the middleman, <laughs> like it gives you, it's so much more valuable in your life and in what you're trying to accomplish or what you're trying to understand about your life. Versus like relying on other people, external people to like understand that, help you understand that. Like you can only do that so much. It's only so helpful. You can only go so far. I can read others' charts, but never my own. Do you feel the same? I used to feel that way, but I just, um, it, it really just comes down to trusting yourself. So it used to be hard for me when I didn't trust myself, but I've just, I'm also very, very, very practiced at it. I've been doing it for four or five years. And I feel like that has, has built trust with myself and understanding like my intuition, but it really just comes down to like learning how to trust your intuition because that's all it is. And, and we get so blocked when it comes to ourselves because we don't, we've been taught to go against our intuition and to not trust our own innate sense of intelligence and intuition. So it, that's what it comes down to is learning how to trust yourself. Well, tear that wall down. Get a sledgehammer. <laughs> tear it down. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. This astrologer told me she'd deteriorate. I would have fired that person. I would have been like, I'm done here. Where's the starting point to learning human design? Your authority. Um, your authority, your profile, your type. And then you can go into like your determination um, and your environment. But I mean, there really is no starting point. It's just about what you're led to after you've covered the basics, like your authority, because that's telling you how you're meant to make decisions which is going to guide you innately to what you need to learn at any given time. Sun, moon, rising, Leo, Leo, Aquarius. Oh, born on a full, no wait, new moon. Born on a new moon. That's fun. That's fun. Thank you all. I appreciate you too. If y'all weren't here, it would just be me talking to myself, which it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> which is also fun, but I appreciate that y'all are here because it's, it's more fun for me to connect with y'all. I'm a Libra rising after all. I love people as much as I'm an introvert. I'm, I'm one of those weird um, extroverted introverts or whatever they're called. I have emotional authority, but it contradicts me being a manifester. No, not really. You just need to go slowly. You need to just slow, your, slow down your process. And act on things when you feel truly clear about them as opposed to like, and when it feels good to do so, as opposed to like when you're an emotional high or you're an emotional low, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Manifestors need a lot of time to process stuff. I mean, so do emotional authorities. So it's just about being patient with yourself. Sag, moon, Pisces, rising, Aries, sun. Woo, woo. That's fun. Hey, Marina. I'm tired. It just hit me. I'm tired. I could not go to sleep last night to save my life. I think the full moon is like, I don't know. That's how I am. <laughs> but other than that, I'm like good in this moment, chilling with y'all. How are you? Yes, it depends on the situation, but sleeping on it will help, like not making any like spontaneous decisions because 
For emotional authorities, spontaneous decisions will wreck you faster than anything else. Like, it's like being hit by lightning. Like, do not force yourself to make spontaneous decisions if you're an emotional authority. And the best thing to do as well is watch your body. Like, one of the best examples I've heard of... Because that's what human design teaches you. It teaches you how to live in alignment with your body. With your body's communication. Because your body is really the decider. The, the body is your navigator. Um, the body is your vehicle that's moving you through life, right? And so... One of the best things to watch and observe in yourself is, is this thing that you're doing or want to do, is that coming from your body? Like, is your body naturally moving towards it? Or is it coming from your mind trying to force your body to do it? So a practical example of this. The mind is like, oh my God, text this person, text this person. You haven't heard from this person, text this person. The mind is telling you, text the person, text the person, text the person. Is your hand going to pick up the phone? Or is it coming from your mind trying to force your body to act? If, you're, if your body isn't like already reaching for that phone to text the person and it's not happening just like from your body's natural like doing it, it's, it's probably not something you should be acting on because it's coming from the mind. Your body is is the decider. Side note, I really enjoy how you show us the upcoming week on the board. Yay! I'm so glad. You're welcome. I have so much fun with those. I have so much fun with those. I've been doing them for, I didn't realize, but TikTok showed me today the one I did last year on this day. And I was like, holy damn, I didn't realize I've been doing those for over a year, every single week <laughs> and sending them out to the email list and putting them in my membership, like in written form every single week. It's crazy. Time flies. Love that perspective. Yay, Edwina. Yay. Yeah, I, I got the practical application. <laughs> if you want to understand this stuff in a practical way and how to like, you know, apply it to your life and embody it in, in a way that makes sense. It is practical and also fun. We have fun here. I'm, I'm, I'm the person. I'm, I'm your person. Time goes fast, especially these days. Yeah. Well, the, the sun, the day being longer really throws me off. I'm really excited for the days to be shorter because literally, I don't know, I get so used to it being night for so long and it being dark by, you know, six, seven. And then when it's not dark till nine o'clock, I'm like, wait, it's nine o'clock. What the, where did the day go? It trips me up. I'm more logical. So this helps. Yay. This Taurus is also logical. I am, I am Taurus. I have Mercury in Taurus also. <laughs> So the way I communicate is very practical, simple, and logical. I honestly feel like um, Taurus, Taurus energy in general is the best, like the be they're the best teachers because they just simplify and stuff. And it's, it comes from a very practical place. Have you done human design analysis for Trump or Biden? I have done it for Trump because we share the same moon sign. <laughs> I can relate to the projection that happens. I haven't looked at Biden's. Um, I don't know, y'all. I really feel like Biden is like a puppet. I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it because it feels really weird and it's making my stomach hurt. But I did look at both um, Trump's astrology and human design. How did I spend the solstice? I did a full moon workshop in my membership hung out with, taught that workshop in there with y'all and we hung out, had a and a afterwards. That was a lot of fun. And I literally don't remember what else I did. <laughs> My Venus is in Gemini and gate 20. So I'm, I'm just like, so I'm always so tunnel vision into the now. You know what? I bet Biden has a lot of fit. I don't know. I kind of want to look now. Been going to bed past midnight. Yeah. I haven't been going to bed till like three or four, which is like, Normally I stay up late, but that is a, that's, that's a lot for me, even as a night owl person. 
Um, okay, so the clarity for emotional authorities. It's like the bigger the decision you have to make, the longer it's going to take you to feel clear about that decision. That's just kind of how it goes um, with the emotional authorities I've noticed in my life. Um, and so, yeah, with like s decisions you have to make quickly, like, you know, if, if someone asks you to lunch or whatever, like go with what your body feels. Go with what feels good. But for longer decisions or for bigger decisions, it can take longer. Yeah, we should write in our candidate. I don't e I don't even know. Like, y'all know we don't choose the president no matter, you know, what you vote. Like, no matter what the majority vote is by the people, the electoral college can vote away from what the vote is by the people. Like, we don't decide. <laughs> we, we don't. Our system is rigged. Is the electoral college that decides who gets to be put in office. They don't have to go with what we vote. Yeah, I feel you. I think I wrote in when um, when Bernie Sanders was like real close to being on the ballot and then he wasn't for whatever reason. I think I wrote him in. <laughs> when was that? Back in like 2016? It had to be, yeah, 2016. Grand Fire Trine. Ooh, and Grand Air Trine. Damn. And they sextile each other. That's a... That's some... That's a gift. Okay, let me look. I'm looking at Biden's chart now. Y'all have me curious about it. Oh, we don't know his birth time. Fucking A. I mean, he... He was born in 1942, so... <laughs> Things were different back then. <laughs> That's almost a hundred years ago. Is he a Leo rising? I thought, it, yeah, Trump is a Leo rising. He has a Leo Mars. And his Pluto is in Leo because he was also a baby boomer. And that's like the baby boomer generation has Pluto in Leo. I wake up every night at three. Oh, wow. And Libra Rising have been cussed with late sleeping patterns too. Oh my God, what's going on with us? Seriously. <laughs> Maybe it's Saturn in the sixth house. That's what I feel like it kind of has been. <sighs> That's really like, Kelsey, you need to have a bedtime routine. You need to have like, you know, you have a morning routine and that's great, but you also need to have one like for going to bed. That's, that's how that's showing up for me, I feel like. It's not a free democracy. It is not. <laughs> The electoral college decides who's in office. It, we don't decide who's in office. Yeah, Trump is Leo at 29 degrees, yep. I did Google it. Biden's birth time is not confirmed. It, there's literally none of these. I usually go by astro theme for celebrities because they have like a rating system for the accuracy of the birth time. But literally none of these websites even have a time at all for him. Oh, well, it looks like, I don't know. I, I trust Astro Theme because they have that rating system and they don't have his birth time. It looks like someone might have rectified it on another website, but again, I don't know. I don't know and I don't feel like rectifying it because I don't know how much longer he's going to be on this planet. So I really don't know. <laughs> like, I'm serious, y'all. It feels like he's real close. To leave in the planet. Oh, born on a new moon, on a Sagittarius new moon, and a Taurus rising. I love that, Amber. Oh my God. <gasps> that is so cool. New moon people, y'all are such icons and like symbols of the energy that whatever your moon or whatever your moon and sun is. So your tweet about four, six profiles. Yeah, yeah. Um, do I have anything to add? I put it all in the tweet, really. What, what kind of, um, I guess I do have something to add because what inspired me to tweet about that was I met a 4-6 profile recently and I was like, he has this very specific energy and specifically when it's someone I'm like dating or like had, there's romantic intentions there 
they come on so fucking strong and i'm just like can you can you not like i'm a taurus you have to take things so slow with me to the point where i'm like are they even romantically interested you you can't be coming on so hot and strong like and that's how four sixes are four six males that are like there's an intention to date they're they're all like they've all been like that with me and then I've noticed two other enter, other general themes. Like I know um, four, six female friends and they're always just so busy. And so like, they're always just, they don't stop. I have a four, six manifesting generator friend and she never slows down. She's the busiest person I've ever known in my life. And all four, six profiles, like share that in common. Pizza party, your ascendant is moon ruled and your natal moon is in the... Oh, is someone's username Pizza Party? I was so confused by that. <laughs> Taurus moons, yeah, they can't be bothered to care. I mean, that that's all that's got to be said about that. He said when we have an empty house. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. Um... This is a hard concept to teach on a live if, you know, I don't know your level of astrology. So that's why I recommended taking my course because I walk you through how to read your chart and how to understand this concept because it is difficult when there's no visual, when I'm not giving you a visual, which is what I do in all my courses. I give you visuals to understand everything. If you have an empty house, what you want to look at, really listen to me, write this down. <laughs> what you want to look at what sign rules that house what sign rules the house okay what is the ruling planet of that sign what's the ruling planet of that sign and where is that planet in your chart where is that planet in your chart so I gave the example of my 11th house. There's nothing in it. I have a video on this as well um, in my astrology houses playlist. There's nothing in my 11th house. It's ruled by Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. The sun is in my 8th house. So that tells me more about my 11th house. And it's Leo energy. So that's how you're meant to show up in that area of your life. You're meant to show up in your community, on social media, anyone that has Leo ruling 11th house. Meant to show up in their community, on social media, with Leo energy. With Leo energy. So that's how you tie other parts of your chart to an empty house. You can do this with any house. It doesn't matter if it's empty or not. It will tell you more about that, how to understand that house. It's all interconnected. And this is what I teach you in my course. I bought my human design from you. I don't do private human design sessions. But um, yeah, if you just reread the, the report, it literally breaks everything down. <laughs> if you're new to it, yes, it does seem like a lot. But start from the beginning. That's why the report is in the order. The pages are in a certain order. Start from the beginning. Like the page where it like breaks down what human design is, start there and then go down and read like, you know, it's really a language to understand human design is. And that's why the pages are in the order that they are in the report. If you just read it once, it's probably not gonna be helpful, but that's why it's a PDF for you to have and resource and go back to as you're learning. You can also check out my ebook on um, the cosmos within you that will break down like everything in human design and help you learn the language if you struggle with like knowing what a center means and what an authority means and what you know it will break i mean that's also in the report but the human design ebook takes you deeper into everything what everything means you have all closed centers as a manny gen oh my god that is so rare i've literally i could count I could count how many people I've met that are all defined on less, less than my two hands. Like, and I've looked at thousands of charts. <laughs> I've looked at thousands of charts. That's amazing. That is such a unique energy to have an all defined chart. Recently looked into Black Moon Lilith. Yeah, I don't, I haven't looked into it, so I don't know. 
Just right up on incarnation crosses. You're sleeping Phoenix. Oh, we're moving into that incarnation cross in 2027. It's a big part of the transition we're all in as a society. We're moving from the cross of planning, which was like structure, Capricorn energy, blah, 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 to awakening as a collective. That's what the sleeping Phoenix is all about. It's literally like Phoenix energy rising from the ashes, awakening and transforming it's like Scorpio energy, which is kind of how I see black moon. Well, we're not even going to get into Lilith because there's two different Liliths and I, I just don't, I haven't cared to really go deep into it. So I'm not the one to get that information from because I don't have it. Hi, pizza party. I don't understand. What is pizza party? <laughs> I'm in the one percentile. Yeah, less than that. Probably like le like less than half a percent. I don't, I've met more reflectors than I have, I've met people who are all defined. Is it the black, Lulu, get my ebook, <laughs> get the cosmos within you <laughs> or a custom human design report because it tells you how to know looking at your chart, what's defined versus what's not. It tells you what the differences are between the two colors in your chart. Like it breaks all of that down. And gives you visuals. Because um, I don't know what human design chart calculator you're looking at or using. They're all kind of different. They have different colors. Um, but what's defined, what's activated in your chart is going to be colored in. What does it mean? You mean a 1-3 profile? I'm a 1-3 profile. Hey! I don't know. I just did that. But <laughs> I meant to do this. <laughs> oh someone's username is pizza party oh <laughs> i was like i'm so confused i didn't see that anywhere else <laughs> five years in your human design whoop whoop that's awesome marie Gemini, Sun, Pisces, Moon. Oh, okay, Cancer Rising. Oh, yep, that makes sense. Yep, your moon rules your chart. It rules your chart. Solar return is your birthday. Where did you see that and why are you asking? Pizza party would be such a cute ter term of endearment. <laughs> Do you... Hi, human design with astrology. Yes. Welcome. I am the human design astrologer. So yes, I teach astrology and human design and I teach you how they connect to each other. I do both. I mean, I have a course that will teach you how to read astrology charts. I have a course that will teach you how to read human design charts. And then I have classes that teach you how they come together. And I'm working on, um, I'm still debating on whether or not I want to launch a course on the astrology of human design, like Astro HD, because there's really not a whole lot to it. Like I've taught a class on the astrology of human design. It's in my membership and it's also in my store up here on my, in my profile that class is, um, and that's really like all there is to it. Like it's, it's pretty simple how they connect once you, once you know what you're looking at. Yes, uh, human design could not exist without astrology. It's the base of astrology. So your whole astrology chart is in your human design. It just looks different. Yay. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That's how I learned with self-study. Love the ring on your pointer finger. Which one? Thank you. <laughs> This is Labradorite, this is Moonstone, and this is um, Opal, yeah, Opal and, and Diamond. Thank you. I love this Moonstone ring too, I got it in Maui. I lived on Maui for a year, if y'all didn't know that, I was a Hawaii, um, I was gonna say bum. I mean, I kind of was a bum when I lived there. <laughs> I lived there for a year almost. 
Leo rising sun and moon. Dang, you were born on a new moon at sunrise. Manifestor with a 4-1 profile. There have been so many 4-1s on here today. Y'all are like so rare. Taurus sun, Aquarius rising and moon. Oh, wow. So you were born. Let me, let me think. Oh, that would be a third quarter moon, I think. You can't get out of a detriment moon. You just have to work with the energy of it. Do you have any full moon or solstices practices? Yeah, I just did a full moon workshop in my membership and I'll be doing one for the next full moon. Um, it includes a breakdown of the astrology and human design behind this full moon. It includes a look at the transits, the other transits going on at this full moon and the next one. And it includes a walkthrough of how to apply the energy to your chart based on where you have Capricorn, where you have Cancer. It gives you a breakdown of the aspects, um, what to look out for basically to understand what's going on for you based on your chart during this full moon. And at the end, we did uh, journal prompts to help you um, work with the energy. So that replay lives in my Astro HD membership. And I'll be doing uh, one for the next full moon as well. Second full moon in Capricorn of 2024. I followed two years ago because we we're in the same area. Steak is a value. Yay! Learned so much in two years. Oh my God, amazing, Grace. Wait, where was I two years ago? Two years ago, I was, I was where I am now. You're in Colorado? Or did you move? 4-6 profile. Nice! How do you read your human design chart? Get a custom chart interpretation. It will break it all down for you. Astrology, humandesign.com. Get your human design chart, plug in your info, look for the green button after you pull up your chart to download a custom interpretation of your chart. Trista's a reflector, yay! I did a reading for a reflector the other day. And that was fun. Love reflectors, y'all really, it really can benefit y'all to learn about your variables and your, um, like your determination, your environment and your astrology. That's what I've noticed with reflectors to be the most helpful for them is learning astrology and learning um, how to work with their variables. Because you really don't have any other consistent energy than, the, than that. Um, human design profile comes from the day you were born. So I can't guess that just off your big three in astrology. It's not related at all to the, your big three. It's related to where the sun was when you were born. I've been reading astrology. I've been reading astrology for five years, like reading charts. I've been into astrology for seven or eight years. Um, and I've been into human design and reading charts since 2020. So four, four years, I guess they're both kind of similar four or five years. Ooh, Kristen's also a reflector. I love it. North node return summer of 2022 and my North node return Showed up Denver area. Oh, okay, cool. I'm not too far. I'm in Boulder. Radical. 4-6 Manny Jen. Oh, that's not good. You're probably around the wrong people. Because <laughs> y'all are y'all are people, people. Unless your moon is in a first line or your nodes are in first lines or something else. And your chart is like conflicting with that, but... Yeah, the success of a 4-6 is directly correlated to the people they have around them. So you probably just been around the wrong people. Oh, I'm also a 1-3 manifesting generator. Gangstalicious. Taurus sun, Gemini moon, Cancer rising. I love Gemini moons. Oh my god. I'm also a Taurus sun. If a house is split between two signs, use the whole sign house system. 
If you wanna if you wanna read your chart using Placidus, I'm not the one. I I I teach whole sign house system um, exclusively. Ego projector. Oh my god, I love that. And one three Virgo moon and rising Aries sun. Nice. Ego. I've only met like one or two other ego projectors. Y'all are so rare. Being a projector and human design seems quite passive. Not really. Um, not really. Every projector I know, like, yes, things come to them, but it's because they're taking action based on their intuition and using their authority to guide them to the right actions, to put themselves out there, to share their gifts with certain people. Like, it's not so passive as it sounds. And I think a lot of that energy is so fucking misunderstood about projectors. And it's really annoying. Like, <laughs> y'all y'all aren't meant to just sit on the couch and wait for people to knock on. That, like, that's not going to work. You got to be, projectors have to be putting themselves out there to be seen and be recognized. Which also requires you to recognize yourself for what your gifts are. And put them into the world to be seen. They're not going to be seen if they're not put into the world. If they're not um shared uh you want to learn about a one three manifesting generator watch me <laughs> just watch me and what i do but you can also learn more about your unique chart with a custom report from my website at astrologyhumandesign.com and it will help you learn how to apply it to your life yes all of my information is practically based simple and practical 4 one. Oh my god we got another 4 one profile y'all are so rare there's so many like rare profiles on here today and uh type and authority combinations i love this oh well then that's the issue mermaid emoji <laughs> yeah you gotta build a network uh and a community it can it can be over social media but like y'all really need that You don't have to align with it, though. So, I mean, that's up to you whether you want that or not. But that's, like, your purpose <laughs> is to build a network <laughs> and have a network. One three, one three profile, yep. That's me! Three five projector... Challenging not to jump right in and give advice. Well, you have to experiment with it. I mean, especially being a third line. Like, third lines have to experiment. You'll have to fail. I'm a third line. I get it. Like, you'll have to fail because you learn from those failures. And you have to be willing to jump into the fire to be like, oh, shit, I need to not do that so I don't get burned next time. Like, you're not going to learn how to work with that energy until you experiment with it. So, so start experimenting with like okay does this person like i have great advice for this person do they feel open to it are they recognizing me are they really present in this conversation right now and recognize that i have something awesome to contribute you can also ask ask the question be like i feel like i have something valuable i could share with you to help you with this are you open to it are you open to to this like do you want advice or are you venting like that can help a lot. But you gotta, again, you gotta experiment with what's gonna work best for you. And that's why I don't recommend human design readings because it, it, it's an experiment and only you can experiment with it. At the end of the day, it's your journey and your experiment and you're the only one that's gonna know how things work for you and what, like based on your own trial and errors with the system itself. Yeah, your line comes from your profile. Um, so get get a custom human design report and it will tell you all of that information. Astrologyhumandesign.com Astrologyhumandesign.com That's my website. Um, I don't like the human design app. I used it for a little while just to like store charts because it was the... 
Before I had a chart calculator on my website, it was the only place I knew to like store charts that I pulled. Um, so that's what I used it for, but I really didn't like the interpretations. I didn't like the layout. It's like very old school, like early 2000s, like not pretty. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't like any of those apps, honestly. And that's why I made my ebook. I am a Libra rising Taurus sun, Sag moon. Yeah, so the lines come from your profile. Like you're a three six, you're a third line and a sixth line. If you're a four one, you're a fourth line and a first line. If you're a two four, you're a second line and a fourth line. Like that, I hate co-star, don't even, let's not talk about it. Thank you. I love my Potter glasses also. Ego authority, how it's tribal and self-driven. Yeah, it depends on the channel you have um, that makes you an ego authority. But it is very self-driven for sure. And tribal in general, because most of the tribal, most of the tribal channels, or most of the channels in the ego, I think maybe all of them are um, the channels that come from the heart center are tribal. If No, one of them is a manifester channel, so that's not true. If you want to learn more about reading charts and like squares, the aspects, um, take my astrology crash course or my become an astrologer course. The, the crash course is all the information condensed. My become an astrologer course. So like all of the, the lessons in the crash course on astrology are like 30 minutes. It's condensed. Um, but in the become an astrologer course, all the, the classes tend to be longer and we go deeper. And then that's where my bonus lessons live. Things I've taught on astrology that are like really niche and specific, like how to make money using your astrology chart, how to predict what your, your life partner will be like using your astrology chart, how to predict the timing of meeting your life partner, timing of having children, timing of changing careers, timing of making a move. Like that's all bonus material that is in my Become an Astrologer course and that's the only place you can get it. So if you want to learn like the deeper stuff of that and my methods for those things, take the Become an Astrologer course. It will also teach you about the transits. There is no best career for human design type. The best career is what, what you're excited to do, what you're excited to share, what comes natural to you. Uh, projectors in general do well with systems. They do well in jobs where they can work for themselves or freelance um, and not have to work 40 hours a week on a schedule um, where they can be guides or leaders for other people. Yeah, I know what a 1-3 profile means. I am a 1-3 profile. Um, we're here to be authorities in our chosen field of investigation and share our information that comes from personal experience. I mean, that's, that's how I teach astrology and human design. Um, and most of where my teachings come from is my personal experience experimenting with this system and analyzing the people in my life and diving deep into the information to simplify it. So that's me as a one, three, that's how I express that part of me. But yeah, anything in your chart you want to learn about, get a custom human design report. It's only $25. It's on sale right now. You can get it from astrologyhumandesign.com. It will walk you through what everything in your chart means, what your open centers mean, what your defined centers mean, what your profile means, what your strategy, your authority, your type means, what your channels are, what your gates are, what they mean. Literally everything, motivation, determination, environment, it's all in the human design report, custom for you. Yes, excited to be a, la a lady of leisure. Okay, the 2551 channel, yeah. I love that channel. It's very compassionate energy. What was Nadia's question? I didn't see. Oh, I did answer that. Yes, I put it all in an ebook. 
because I was like, there's no simple way to learn human design. Why is this information so fucking hard to find? And when you do find the information, it's hard as hell to understand it because it's like in another language. It's like in like PhD level academic language. I don't even know. So that's why I created my ebook because it was like, I need a way to simplify this for people who <laughs> just cannot learn this way. So that's why I created the ebooks. And then I'm working on making them into um, a real book eventually. Question about Midheaven and Scorpio. Should I be looking at Scorpio astrology for career? I don't know what you mean by that. Like Scorpio horoscopes? No. Horoscopes are based off of rising signs. So you want to be looking at the horoscope for your rising sign. Your three month old is a Pisces sun, Aquarius moon, and Gemini rising. Aww. Three month old. What was going on three months ago? Let's see. Saturn. Oh, we had a lot in Pisces, I think. And we had a lot in Aries. Oh my God, we had so much in Aries. We have a similar big three. Cool. Taurus sun, Libra moon, Aries rising. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a Libra rising, Taurus sun, Sag moon. Yay! I don't see the become an astrologer. It, it's under courses. So in my shop up here, there's a link for my courses and all of my courses are um, on that page. And there are bundle options too. So I have a course on human design. You can bundle it with the astrology one. And then I just released a variables bundle you can also bundle that with um, the astrology and human design course courses, and you can also bundle it with like just the human design course. But yeah, all of that is under the courses link. You might have to scroll down a little bit. It's also on my website. If you go to astrologyhumandesign.com, there's a tab that says courses, and that will take you to it also. I'm not an Aries sun, no. I'm a Taurus sun. Taurus, Taurus, Scorpio. That is anything but boring. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. My two-year-old has a Gemini sun, Aquarius moon. What? That's so cool. Someone, someone else just said they were a Gemini rising and Aquarius moon, right? Am I remembering that correctly? You get made fun of. Who are you talking to astrology about? Those, you need to find new people. <laughs> you need to find new people to talk about it with. Best way, just go places carrying an astrology book. Go go to coffee shops. Go to, I don't know, where else would you go with a book? Restaurants. <laughs> carrying an astrology book. That's how I've met the best people. You have to look at the chart. Oh, wait, you're asking that to the person that said that. Never mind. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Astrologyhumandesign.com. It's all there, too. My shop is kind of a... It's kind of a, up here. My shop's kind of a mess. I don't know what to do about it. But everything's organized on my website. Currently geeking out about... Oh, God. Synastry between my kids. Oh, my God. That's awesome. Yeah, someone in my membership community was just talking about that on one of our live Q&As and how they're like learning so much about their kids and their, their like synastry with their kids. It's, God, it's the coolest thing. It's the coolest thing. Sag rising, Libra sun, Pisces moon. Ooh, moon in the fourth house, just like Kim Kardashian. Wait, that's literally Kim Kardashian's big three. That's crazy. Me and my husband are all, me, my child, and my husband are all Taurus. That's awesome. <laughs> when I moved into this place, I was like, oh, these landlords are awesome. And then sure enough, they're Tauruses. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, we're all Tauruses. No wonder y'all had to make the place like beautiful and like renovate it. Because we're Tauruses, we're Tauruses. Is the membership also the way to go or take the astrologer? It just depends on what you're looking for. 
Um, so my membership is geared towards community. I do have classes that I've taught in there on the deeper concepts in astrology, like aspect patterns, secondary progressions, um, degrees, decans, like degree theory. I've taught so many classes in the deeper stuff on astrology in there, and that's the only place that they are. Now, the Become an Astrologer course is like if you're new to astrology and you want to understand how to read a birth chart, that's what the course is for. And then, like I said, it includes bonus lessons that are only in the course on crucial life timing, when to move based on your chart, when to like focus on relationships and potentially find a life partner based on your chart, how to make money based on your chart. All of that is in the Become an Astrologer course. So it just depends on where you are. Um, and what you want to learn about. I'd say the membership is a great addition because we like there's live Q and A's and we it's it's more geared towards community and while there is like material to learn from in there, it's really just geared towards like community and having access to me to ask like questions on a live Zoom call. <laughs> um, there is a comment section in the in the course where you can ask questions if you have, and then I'll reply to the questions in the in like the comment section of the course. Um, but yeah, they're just different. They're different offers. My membership is really for advanced material. It's fifteen a month for the membership. I found a job I didn't know existed. Turns out the majority of my coworkers have Libra rising. Oh, that's fun. I love the book, the encyclopedia. Ooh, I've never heard of it. Encyclopedia of birthdays. Happy birthday. Is it Vivian? Taurus make the best homes. Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> I'm a Taurus sun, Libra rising, Sag moon. Had that book since I was 14. Well, wow. the book that got me into astrology was um, The Secret Language of Birthdays. I forget. By Gary something and somebody else. That's what like blew my mind about astrology and really got me into it. And looking into it really deeply. Oh, my grandma. That's who left a voicemail. That's fun have that one too yeah that's a good one that's a good one that's like a great coffee table book and to blow people's minds like if you have people who are like eh, about astrology read them their day from that book they will never complain about astrology again promise Taurus women are my favorite. Cool. That's me. We are very loyal for sure. <laughs> I feel like most any fixed sign, fixed signs in general are very loyal. Every fixed sign I've known. I prefer uh, opinionated. <laughs> and like... Uh, <laughs> determined and steadfast i'm a libra in every what in every sign house what well, i don't know what that means i don't y'all keep asking me about lilith i don't know much about lilith i know there's two different liliths are we talking about the asteroid Lilith? Or are we talking about the calculation Lilith that is Black Moon Lilith? There are two different ones. And that's why I've never looked into it. Because it doesn't make sense to me. Because <laughs> they, they can be different. They're different. They're completely different calculations. Like one is an actual asteroid, and like Chiron. And the other one is like a calculation based on your sun, your rising, the sun, the moon, and the earth. Like, And that's also not how I read astrology. I, I, I'm a blind optimist. <laughs> I'm a blind optimist. I don't really care what what the dark part of the chart is. That's not what I want to look at. No, I haven't given up on dating. My progressed moon just moved into my fifth house. So it's kind of become like more so of a focus for me lately. 
Hey, Riley. Sag, Sun, Libra, Moon, Scorpio, Rising. We got a 12th house moon. That's fun. I'm a Sag, Moon, Libra, Rising. Yeah, most people don't know that there's two Lilas. It's really confusing and not, not my favorite. How many books to explore astrology deeper? My ebook. Um, there's not really one book I would recommend. I do, if you go to, um, I might even still have it in my store up here, my favorite book recommendations. Let me see if that's still in my store. Because there's not one book. There's not. There's like a dozen. Um, I think it's still in my store though. It's my favorite book recommendations. Yeah, that's why I've never looked into Lilith because I'm like, this is this is confusing. I don't I don't care to be confused. Yeah, I do have in my store up here in my profile link. Um, go to find Kelsey's favorite books. All my favorite books are in there. Um, the book I recommend for human design is my ebook, my ebooks, because I have one for the basics of human design, and then I have one for the variables. Um, the only other human design book I would recommend, but it is a textbook. This is why I made my ebooks, because they actually make sense. <laughs> The only other human design book I would recommend, but like I said, it is a textbook, like a PhD level textbook, is the definitive book of human design. I feel like every other book I've tried to read on human design, it, it I don't I don't like it, don't recommend. That's why I created my ebook and why I made my human design course because it breaks it all down really simply, really easily. That none of the information seems to be doing. You still haven't texted your ex? Hell yes. That's what we love to see. Aquarius, Sun, Libra, Moon, Cap, Rising, always tracked Earth signs. Oh, nice. I am a Taurus, Sun, Libra, Rising, Sag, Moon. I'm so shocked y'all don't know this because I put my chart in my videos so often. <laughs> I use my chart a lot as an example to teach from. Hi, Emily Clark, 333. Three, three, three. Ooh, triple Virgo. And then right above that is a double Capricorn Virgo moon. I love that. Fire signs love you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, get my ebook. It, it will all make sense. I make it make sense. Because <laughs> the shit out there on human design does not make sense. And that's why I've created everything I have created for, for human design to help people learn it. How are the Libra Aries eclipses affecting you, Kelsey? Well, I kind of blocked them out. <laughs> it was a big focus on relationships and boundaries and relationships, especially with the combination of the Mercury retrograde in Aries and my seventh house and those eclipses being in my first and seventh houses. It was a lot of me stepping into me, um, attracting new people because of that. I mean, duh, it makes sense. First house and seventh house, me and other people. That's how it was. Hi. The North Node and Rising sign are not similar. Well, no, they're not. <laughs> because the North Node is like your destiny. It's what you're here to grow into in that area of your life. It's what you're here to learn how to master. Um, so like, I'll give using my chart as an example as always my north node is in scorpio in the second house i'm here to learn how to <laughs> let go of control around money and resources and build my own independence when it comes to financial resources and possessions second house that's what i learn i'm here to learn how to grow into my libra rising i'm here to learn and overcome like people pleasing and how to set boundaries and step into like my authentic truth and self. So, I mean, unless like your North Node is in the first house, I don't see, I personally don't see how they could be similar. 
Um, because I mean, everything in your chart is, can be looked at from a view of what you're here to grow into, what, how you're here to evolve. That's what, that's the kind of astrology that I teach is a, a what am I, uh, evolutionary astrology, like how you can use the system to grow and evolve as a person. Um, so, I mean, you can look at any of your placements with that perspective and it will give you that, that information. The only fire... Oh, I have Mars and Aries, too. I think that's the only fire in my... Yeah, that's the only fire in my big six. The grow into aspect. Yeah, but I mean, you like I said, you can look at any placement for that. Like, that's just, that's just a lens that you're looking at your chart through. But, like, the north node is... The energy you are here to evolve into, yes, it's your path of destiny and path of discomfort to, to achieve your destiny, your karmic, um, your karmic destiny. And then, but I really see the rising as like who you are at your core. It's who you are at your core. It's who you actually are. Um, and there, there's always going to be like the shadow or the light aspects to every single sign and every single energy. I feel like I'm cursed with Saturn and Aries. Why? Because it's in, it's in uh, fall in Aries. I feel like everyone with Saturn, well, this is very general, but everyone with Saturn and Aries, which I have a podcast on the different Saturn signs and what your biggest like uh, teaching lesson is through Saturn, what you're here to teach others as well through your Saturn. And I feel Saturn and Aries people are really here to pioneer, be innovators, be pioneers of a new structure that we're all stepping into. It's actually very like divine <laughs> that Saturn and Aries are going to be having their Saturn return when we're stepping into the Pluto and Aquarius era and Neptune is moving into to like Saturn, Saturn return and Aries is going to be, especially if it's your first Saturn return, it's a pivotal, like, just life. That's crazy timing. That's crazy synchronistic timing because we have so much shifting then. When you'll be in your Saturn return, like, that is huge. Saturn scares me. Learn to love Saturn. Saturn is like that teacher that you hated in school that actually taught you the things you needed to know to live, to like have a good life. And you're like, oh man, they sucked at the time. Like they were really hard or they were really whatever. Like, but then you look back and you're like, damn, I actually learned the most from that teacher, even though it like kind of sucked in the moment. That's Saturn. So learn to love Saturn. You'll have an easier time <laughs> in your life because Saturn is really, it's really beautiful energy. Like Saturn is building long-term generational wealth for you and your family, everyone that comes after you versus Jupiter is like winning the lottery and it's all gone a month later. Nobody wants that. We want Saturn, right? We want Saturn energy of like, yeah, long-term generational wealth. That's Saturn. So thank you, Rain. It's hard for me to wear my glasses in the summer because it's so damn hot outside, but I just like, contacts have been fucking on my eyes lately. If you know, you know. <laughs> Ooh, Taurus, Sun, Libra, Moon, Gemini, Rising. That's red. Sun in the 12th house. We'd love to see it. Oh, that's what I was looking at. My favorite book recommendations are in my store, in my profile link. My favorite books, all there. All there. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm a Taurus sun also, Stephanie, but I'm a Libra rising. But Gemini rules my chart. I feel like Gemini, if y'all didn't see my video about Gemini risings, I think it, I took it from my last live because uh, one of my friends hopped on who's a Gemini rising. And I feel like Gemini risings are going through such a like rebirth right now. It's truly beautiful to see it happen.
Yay, yeah, for sure. North Node and Gemini in the 12th. Pisces Midheaven in the 9th. I love that. Love that. Okay, it's time to end the live. I love y'all so much. It's been so fun connecting with y'all. If you want to learn about your chart ruler, get my free guide. That's in my profile link. It will walk you through how to find your chart ruler and what it means based on your rising sign and the ruling planet of your rising and where that placement is in your chart. It will walk you through that and give you answers. It will give you answers. But yeah, I'm hungry as fuck. So time to eat. I appreciate y'all for being here. <laughs> and yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.